hello and welcome back to another d5 render tutorial video so i've done many d5 render tutorial videos in the past and this is just another one of them and in today's video we're going to be covering this luxury duplex okay so this model was done in autodex revit because i'm a revit user of course this video will, can help people that use other modeling softwares but mainly i would suggest it for people that use autodex revit but still if you use any other rendering software i think it can still serve okay so before we move any further i just want to explain some basics so my channel is acted piper and in that channel i release software tutorial videos including modeling and rendering particularly revit tutorial videos and also d5 render videos so you can check out my playlist of videos where it can be helpful to you maybe if you want to learn how to model or render so just make sure you subscribe to our channel by that okay so i'm going to go over what d5 is and what it's basically in course okay so d5 render is a real-time rendering software if you don't know what real-time rendering software it basically means a software that has like a mini world of its own where you can carry models from other softwares bring it into that mini world and render it by controlling the environment to get realistic images or animations so d5 render in that function is one of the best real-time rendering softwares out there and it's something i highly recommend and you are going to see how good it is as i'm going to use it to render this work now okay so before we move any further as i said earlier my channel has a lot to offer so make sure you hit the subscribe button like this video and don't forget to hit the notification bell to get notified once we release new videos with that said and done we are going to start the video so firstly before you want to render it's always good to have a quality model and detailed model so as you can see i modeled almost everything to details you can see the swimming pool i modeled both the slanting floors of the swimming pool as well as the swimming pool water so it's important that before you render you should model well in whatever software you are using whether revit or sketchup another thing is before using d5 it's always important to know that d5 is a very graphics intense soft software so it's re it really demands a taxing system like a very powerful system to be able to keep up with its um, shenanigans so personally i would recommend at least an rtx 2070 if you want to use d5 for the graphics processor but usually i think on the website the minimum is gts 1060 but you note that the better the graphics card the more you'll be able to get the best out of d5 render so i'll suggest you use a mid-range to high-end powerful system when using d5 render so with that out of the way we are just going to start the main stuff immediately so as you can see we have fences we have a lot of things in this model but one thing i usually like doing when rendering in d5 is i usually used to group each fence per each boundary like as you can see i if i click on this this fence this railing and this wall is already grouped together if you don't know how to model in revit i have many videos covering that from small scale modeling in revit to large scale modeling so you can check out those videos i have a playlist of them it can help you if you want to learn how to model using autodex rebel so we have this fence here which i created and grouped together we also have this fence which i grouped together on each axis so each fence are just grouped together so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to click on one hold control click on the second one click on this and click on the fourth one then i'm going to hover around it make sure i'm um, within the highlighted part then right click and hide the view by element so once this is done yeah you'll be asking yourself why did this guy create a fence only to hide it the reason i'm doing it is because i want to bring in the fence into d5 independently so it's not going to be like i'm not going to be restricted to the fence is not going to restrict my movement or restrict my views but you are going to see how what i just said now is going to be practical practically applied as we move further so now the um, the building is fenceless we are just going to click over around this d5 render echo so now i'm going to use this opportunity to talk of how to get d5 render so d5 render is basically a free real-time rendering software if you go to d5 render.com you can just click and download it the only thing is that d5 has a pro version which gives you more stuff it's not that d5 basically is paid for but d5 is basically free but if you want to get more components and more just basically more features you can apply for the pro version which i you can use my affiliate link the link will be in the description below so once you click on that link you are going to get a five percent discount in your purchase of the link so the thing is not too expensive i think per month is 36 dollars then per year 330 to 360 dollars or some sort so it's not something too expensive to purchase so another thing i want to talk about is this um d5 render icon you are seeing in my revit so to get this d5 render icon in revit it doesn't just automatically appear if you have revit you need to go to d5 render website you are now going to go to plugins and workflow so once you click on plugins you are going to see the 
have it to d5 live sync so once you install it on your system it's going to show this icon is going to automatically appear anytime you open your modeling software so the same goes with 3ds max the same goes with um, sketchup the same goes with tachycad so whatever model even blender whatever modeling software you're using d5 is compatible with a lot of them so you can just get the live sync so now i'm just going to hover around there so there are two ways of bringing a model from another software to d5 you can either click on the live sync that is the start d5 or the export and d5 so for this um start d5 to work d5 will need to be open as you can see i've not yet opened d5 on this system but i usually prefer exporting and importing to d5 it's just it basically boils down to my own personal philosophy and my behavior i usually like um, things simple and direct so i usually prefer exporting and bringing in into d5 so i'm going to show you how to um you can always go back to the modeling software and you can always update the model from the modeling software and it's going to update on d5 so i'm just going to click on export uh -huh. so once you click on export you are going to see this icon is going to come out so this icon contains some parameters you can tweak depending on what you want for now i don't need to tweak any of this so i just need to increase this a bit to about 10 or 11 but 10 is okay but wait a minute before i export there are some things i'll need to do so you know that we are doing we are basically doing an exterior render so when you're doing exterior render some things are not necessary so like for instance i'm going to try and delete or hide all the furnitures which I think I've already done. So let me just click on one of this wall. So apparently there is no furniture inside this building. So I think it's as light as possible. So now another thing to note why exporting in D5 render is that you should always, um, one important thing is the pivot point. So the pivot point is like the point of control where you are going to be able to move it from in D5 render. So to get a good pivot point, if you are using Autodex Revit, you can always click on this icon. Once you click on it, you are just going to click on this um, center and just drag this pivot here then once you have dragged the pivot to this point you are going to click on x so it means that that point we dragged it to is now the center point or the movement point of this model so now i'm just going to click on export i'm going to increase this to about 11 let me just make it 11 or 12 then i'm going to click on export so it's going to give us our file explorer and it's going to give us the opportunity to save it where we want to save it so i'm just going to go and quickly save it where i want to save it i'm just going to save it as d5 d5 1 then i'm just going to click on save so why this is exporting i'm not going to go and open d5 render so as i said once you install d5 render it's just going to once you open it it's going to um, tell you it's going to download some additional files but after it downloads d5 is good to go so i'm just going to hit d5 as you can see i have it on my system then i'm just going to click on it to open it while it's exporting okay so once you open d5 render you are going to see something like this if you haven't done any work before you are just going to if you click on recent you can see the past works i've done or the recent last project i've done you can see so many icons here so as you can see over this um, part here you can see my email here so this part if you have not logged in is going to give you the option to log in so once you log in you can now apply for a pro version okay so you now have here this now shows you some workflow you can still even download the live syncs from here you don't even need to go to the website you can click on this explore so this just gives you some things happening on d5 some things just d5 render itself just has to offer like some tutorials if you want to watch from um, the software then now the main thing we are going to be focusing on are just these two icons here so we're going to click on this new to create a new project and we're just going to click on new to open a new d5 project all right so now we have opened d5 we're going to see this is going to pop us this beginner's guide so i don't want it to show again so i'm just going to click on close so the first thing to do is to click on ctrl s to save this your project so we're just going to save it where we want to save it so i'm going to save it in the same folder where i kept the other files i'm just going to call this d5 one so after i've done this i'm just going to click on save and it's going to save the project so the first thing to do is to bring in our model to bring in our model we're just going to go under this icon here we're just going to click on import so once we have clicked on import we are just going to go to our file explorer use the, it's going to the file explorer is going to come out so and i'm going to use it to just search for where we kept it so as you can see this is the file we exported you can see the d5 one is uh, is, is going to appear so i'm just going to click on open and it's going to import into the project so once is important if you go to this icon you're going to see imported an object so currently we are the imported is highlighted more so it means we are still the imported library here so you can see the file we imported there so we'll just click on it and it's going to appear in this d5 render interface 
or this d5 fold so now you are going to see something like this you just need to um click once that is um left click and just click left click to place it so once you've placed it you can now move around so there are basically many ways of moving around basically treasure but those ways you can go over to this icon here to access the way so you have the orbit fly and walk so this orbit basically means once you hit, click on the scroll button you can just move left or right to move in an orbital manner and you can zoom in zoom out click on your scroll key on your mouse zoom in and zoom out that is basically how to move in the orbit too but you can click on this and you can click on fly so this fly basically gives you the option to move like a go so you can increase the speed scroll in scroll out then you can just right click to change the direction of the camera then you can zoom in as so i usually prefer using this free tool so because it gives me freedom to move anyhow so now we have brought in this model we forgot to do something or rather it was on purpose we didn't bring in the fences so now i'm going to show you the reason why i didn't um, i hit the fence in autodex revit so i'm going to go back to revit now and i'm going to go back to this project so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to over, zoom out first i'm going to hover around select everything and click on hh then i'm just going to go to this icon here this reveal hidden element click on it then i'm just going to start uh, um, on hiding these fences one by one so i'm going to click on this right click on hide in view by element then i'm going to click on click off this um, reveal hidden element icon here so now once i've done this remember that pivot point i told you about is going to come in handy now so i'm going to click on this and i'm just going to drag this to the center point here of this wall so this is very important because if you don't do this like this it will be difficult for you to be moving it once you bring these fences to d5 render then i'm just going to make sure i click on this x because if i don't click on that x that pivot fair is going to export as well so i'm going to click on export now i'm going to click on export then i'm going to just call it f1 and export so i'm going to repeat the same process for the other fence and i'm just going to be on hiding them one by one so so i'm going to click on this hide in view again by element click on this right click on hide in view by element then click on this to off it so i'm just going to click on this and i'm going to uh, okay drag it this center point and drag the pivot here then i'm going to click on x to close it then i'm going to export Alright, so now we are done with this. I can just um, click on HR to hide the remaining thing. So that HH was just a temporary hide. So as you can see now, I'm going to use this um, opportunity now to show you if I want to change something in this model, how am I going to change it? Like you can see now there is a there is a space between this um, building and this um, floor. So I'm just going to try and cover it up, correct it and show you how to update your models in D5 render. So I'm going to go back to the Revit model. So once I go back to this Revit model, I can can just click on this floor click on edit boundary then i can just click on this pick line to pick here and pick here then pick here too then i can click on split element to click on this then i'm just going to trim everything together okay so once i've basically rectified what i want to rectify i can also go over here click on architecture components model in place casework click ok click on ok then click on extrusion click on set pick work plane then pick the top of this then just pick here pick here pick here pick here as well and pick here then i'm just going to go and trim this together then i'm just going to set the extrusion start at zero and the extrusion end at 25 and i'm just going to call it plaster white Okay, so once I found my material, I can just click on it and click finish and click finish. So now we have rectified this. 
so what we are going to do again before we update we are going to click on this pivot point again or this 3d gizmo here then we're just going to click on center and drag this pivot point to this point here then click on x so now what we are going to do is we're just going to click on d5 render icon again we're going to click on export then we're going to click on export and just click on that d5 one file we exported it as before and click on save it's going to ask us whether we want to replace it then i'm just going to click yes so I click in yes i'm going to go back to d5 render and wait for it so while waiting for this i'm going to start bringing in the fences that i exported so i'm going to go and click on this icon once more i'm going to click on f1 i'm just going to hold shift to select everything then left click and select everything so it's going to select together then i'm going to, going to click import so it's going to import of them at once then i'm just going to click on this f1 and i'm just going to bring it into the project so i think the f1 is here so another thing to know is that since we are creating fence i will want it to align accurately one thing we can do is to click on t so this t is going to give you option to access an orthographic view so now once we have placed this fence we can now carefully arrange it to be accurately in place so i'm going to click on this f2 then once i click on f2 i'm just going to place it here and i'm just going to arrange it then i'm going to click on okay let me move it back a bit push it out so now i'm going to click on f3 so f3 is going to come out and we're going to place it so i'm going to click on f4 so why is cut i'm just going to place this here okay so now we have done this i'm going to click on p so now we have placed all these fences so you are going to see the versatility i was talking about earlier in the video if you go back to revit we are going to see that we have successfully exported this again so these updates are ready so now we are going to go to d5 render again so now you can see that automatically it didn't just update so what we are going to do now is we are going to click on this model we are going to go here and we are just going to click on click on confirm then it's going to update it so now you can see the updates we made are clear and cool so now we understand um, we have brought in the models i've explained how to move your move basically navigate in d5 render what you do is i'm going to go over to this icon and i'm going to reduce the speed of this um, flying movement so what this does is that if i'm navigating it slows down my movement so by slowing down my movement i'm able to carefully get the right view i want to get then i'm not going to go to this icon now so now this icon contains settings of the camera angle so now this angle is 90 degrees which is um, kind of realistic uh -huh. but i usually like using starting from 75 degrees to get a good camera shot so once this is done now i can now click on this use this navigation keys on my keyboard and use e to go down you can use w to go front you can use a and d to go sideways then s to go down so we're just going to use this e to go down too then i'm just going to click on f on my keyboard okay since my keyboard has some funny stuff going on so i'm just going to go to this camera setting then i'm going to go and click on this um, two point perspective here so normally the shortcut is f8 i'm just having some keyboard issues that's why i can't use it so once you click on it you are able to get a two a first in two point perspective yes it's first in meaning is not that realistic but sometimes rendering can be an illusion sometimes so sometimes all those settings to just tweak and get the effect you want so we are going to be in the move sideways to get a good camera shot okay then i'm still going to click on e to go down because i think this camera shot needs to go down then i was going to click on this zoom in here then place this here so i think um our camera is too front for too side focused so i think placing it around here will do the trick okay so now we have gotten the now we're just going to click on this create scene here okay so now what we can do now is we can click on this fence here remember if i click on object you are going to see all these models we imported we placed so this imported shows the models we imported so this object shows the object we placed for instance if i click on delete now and delete this you're going to see that it's going to disappear from this object library here. so if i hit ctrl z it's going to appear again so what i'm going to do i'm going to click on this and i'm going to hover around it so once i hover around this i'm going to see this thing that looks like an eye this icon that shows an eye so i'm just going to click on it. it's going to hide it so it doesn't mean this thing is deleted it just means it's hidden so if i click on it again it's going to unhide okay so for now i'm just going to click create another scene here that is to just click on this plus icon over here to create another scene then i'm just going to click on hide here then i'm just going to adjust this just this to this point 
then i'm just going to click hover around here and click on update to update this scene okay so now we are going to pick a shot i'm going to click on back to this scene one so the reason why i duplicated this scene is because i need a scene where all the things are not hidden so it's not going to be difficult for me to i'm not going to need to start on hiding things in different views so anytime i finish setting a view i'm going to go back to raw view and start from there again to set it so i'm going to go over here click on this increase the speed a bit then i'm going to move to this point here so this is another view where we can pick another perspective shot which is nice then i'm going to click on this and slow down the movement so i'm just going to pick i'm going to pick on this fence here i'm going to click it. i'm going to pick on this fence here click on hide now so once i've done with this i'm just going to zoom out a bit i'm zoom to this point here okay so i'm going to go and make it front focused a bit so i think this is okay so i'm just going to click on plus to save this view so now we are done with this we are now going to go back to this raw view again so now we are going to be picking a front shot and approach a kind of elevation shot so i'm going to click on this increase the speed a bit then move to this point here then now i'm going to move back a bit okay so now i'm just going to click on this f1 again you can see it highlighted yeah and i'm going to click on hide to hide it so now i'm just going to zoom out a bit and i'm just going to click on pick new here to pick another shot then finally i'm just going to go back to this raw one and i'm going to be picking an aerial shot so i'm going to go to um, p to exit the two point perspective um setting because this two point perspective it kind of restricts you for instance if i go back to this setting and i try increase speed and try to move you can see that no matter how i move i'm still kind of restricted in one kind of distorted setting so to exit it just click on p so now we have done this we are going to go back and just zoom out here then we're going to click on this to unhide this f1 so now we want to pick an area shot so the things i do while picking an area shot is to go to this camera and make the view angle very smaller let's say 45 degrees so i'm going to click on e to control the camera movement then i'm just going to zoom in here I think this is enough for an aerial shot. Okay, let me grab the swimming pool. So I'm just going to pick this here and I'm just going to click on create new. Okay, so now this we have picked basically five or four shots. Let me just call it four because this one is not, I'm not really counting this one. So now we have finished picking the shots. We are now going to go to material application. If you go over to this tab here, you are going to see this environment tab. So the environment tab basically controls as what it says the environmental settings of the scene. So you have two options. You have the Geo and Sky and you have the HDRI where you can import HDRIs but D5 gives you some options for some HDRIs. So we are going to be working with the Geo and Sky because I see it as the most flexible. Then I'm going to click on this custom sun settings. So this custom sun as the name implies controls where your sun is going to be. Then we are just going to go to this effect briefly and we are going to turn off this auto exposure. I don't like auto exposure because it just gives you what it deems as the best exposure for the project. Then I'm going to go back to this environment. Then I'm going to reduce the sun intensity first of all i'm going to go back to effect and reduce the exposure to a good extent so i think this 0 0.0.15 0 is okay then i'm going to go to environment so what i'm going to do now is once i've reduced the sun intensity i'm going to increase this sun this radio so it's going to soften shadows so i'm going to reduce this altitude because it controls how high the sun is then i'm going to increase the cloud amount because i want more clouds to be in the project uh, i'm going to now change the azimuth angle that is the sun location so i'm just going to be reducing this more to about um 15 then i'm just going to change this azimuth angle to about this point for now then i'm going to go to this effect again i'm going to control this white balance change it towards blue um increase the tint to about 0.06 and i think the contrast is okay so i'm going to go back to this so i don't think i'm quite there yet with the sun settings i'm looking at so i'm just going to reduce this again to about okay let me leave it at 13 then i'm just going to change this angle here okay let me increase it to about 18. okay so this is just a daylight setting so now we have set this on this view we can always go to this update scene and click on update then i'm just going to right click click on copy parameters click on this one here right click 
and paste parameters so you can see that some things change including the objects that are hidden so what we can do now is once we have pasted these parameters we can just go and hide this and click on this height click on this height then we're just going to go and update this scene so i'm just going to click on this um, the reason why i'm doing this is i don't want to waste time doing doing all those settings we did on each of these um, scenes so i'm just going to right click and click on paste parameter then i'm just going to unhide this here click on this and i'm going to hide this f1 here and i'm going to click on this and update this i'm going to go over here too all right so we are now going to start with the material application so we are going to click on p to exit two point perspective setting let me just click on it again if it wasn't effective then we are going to be navigating around this model and we are going to be applying materials so first we are going to start from the site to apply materials you simply go to assets so in this asset you can see the options of material in d5 library you can also click on i on your keyboard to access the material editor so you can go over to this icon here where they have this base color and base color map and can choose to import whatever map so you can see automatically the materials are applied in revit coming as bitmap so you can see the bitmap here where my mouse is so but that is just some um, other way of applying materials but for now we are going to start from the material library so to apply site materials there is a place i usually go i usually used to go to this outdoor ground so this outdoor ground usually contains some site um, nice site materials for example this exterior paving is what i usually use so i'm going to use it at this point here and i'm just going to place this here so once i've placed it my issue with this exterior paving is just the color so the color is too will i say okay this red is okay actually so what i'm just going to do is i'm going to click on escape i'm going to click on i on my keyboard click on this then i'm just going to click on this icon here then i'm just going to reduce the tone of the red a bit so it won't be too strong i'm going to just drag this to about three or five okay so once this is done i'm just going to click on this copy duplicate materials and i'm going to paste this here so what i'm going to do for this i'm going to make this a different kind of paved area so i'm going to click on i on my keyboard i can click to close this material library for um, this material library for now then i'm just going to click on this click on this icon once again of this duplicated one then reduce the saturation to almost zero increase this so it will be more of towards white gray okay then i'm going to go to this base color here click on this and i'm going to make this white so now this is done we have a white paved area here i can click on this i can click on duplicate copy this and i can copy it to this point so the main paved area around the site is going to be um white in white or gray pavings okay so now this is done we can now go and apply some materials on these caps so for these caps instead of leaving this plain white like this i'm going to be applying some concrete materials so i'm going to go to assets i'm going to go up i'm going to go to concrete so once i go to concrete a nice library of concrete materials will come out so i'm just going to use this rough concrete concrete here and i'm just going to place this here so i usually like this rough concrete because of its nice texture so i'm going to click on i to edit it then i'm just to go over here and uh, just edit some little little touch parameter so i'll scroll here and i'm going to go and turn on this type planner i'm going to go to this round corner settings um, and make this radius about 3.8 or 3. Point something okay so now this is done we can hover around here you are going to see this adjustable icon will appear once you hover around the edge then we're just going to drag this material like so it will not be occupying too much space on the screen so now we are done with these caps we are now going to edit the material of these parking lines so these parking lines what we can simply do instead of looking for a material from here we can click on this you remember our material edit on clicking i you can access it so once we click on this we we'll just scroll up go to this base color click on this yellow and just change it to white so that is another easy way to just edit the materials okay so now we are going to go over here and we are going to be looking for some gravel materials so the the thing i'm going to make sure is that uh, okay this is a gravel material so what i'm going to do now is i'm not going to go to this natural or raw, um, raw materials so in this natural raw materials i'm going to see options of that i can use to find gravels so i'm just going to scroll down till i see a good gravel material
okay so i think i've seen what i'm looking for so once i click on more stones here you can see the material name in case if you are looking for it i'm just going to click and place it so after i've done this i'm going to click on escape i'm going to click on i on my keyboard i'm going to click on this then i'm just going to tweak some things i'm going to go over to this stretch so this stretch is a material setting you can use it to increase the scale or if you reduce the value you are going to increase the scale of the materials so i'm just going to go here and make it about 0.3 or something then i'm going to go to this base column up click on this tool icon then i'm going to reduce the saturation of colors so it won't be too saturated then i'm just going to click on this curve material remember i applied a concrete material on this curve so i'm just going to go over to this icon here at this top um, corner here i'm just going to click on duplicate then i'm going to copy it and paste it here i'm also going to zoom into these floors here click on this to reduce speed then i'm going to zoom in here and i'm just going to paste this at these edges too so it's going to be concrete all around so i'm going to increase the speed again so after i've done this i'm now going to start applying some green areas okay so to apply green area there are many ways to apply green area, or rather two basic ways to apply green area in revit okay there are many ways i think there are three so we'll start from the first one so you are just going to click on i on your keyboard to access the material editor library then i'm just going to click on it so once you click on this green area you can see it's highlighted with black lines as i click on it then i'm going to go over to this icon here this is called material template once i click on this drop down you are going to see options of drop downs you, you click grass you can see subsurface scattering that is another way of applying grass you can see this grass so let's start with this grass now so once we click on it we are just going to see this green area here and this is just revit default grass you can click on it to change it between some options you can change it to this one as well so it's still some nice greenery which you can use sometimes but the one which i usually prefer and the one which i'm going to um, use for this video is kind of a bit different so instead we're going to close to this and we're going to click on this and change it back to cost after doing that we're going to go to this natural raw materials then i'm just going to scroll down till i see a this dry deciduous woodland too so you can take note of it so i'm going to click on this and i'm just going to paste it here so once i paste it i'm going to click on i on my keyboard then i'm just going to go to this base color go to this base color map then i'm just going to adjust the size a bit then i'm going to go over here and turn on this um click on this displacement and um, material template change it from displacement to custom then i'm just going to go and turn on this uv randomizer settings so once i've turned on this uv randomizer settings you can see the whole thing is going to just look more realistic and uneven so i'm going to click on this and i'm just going to copy this for now so i'm sure you're already wondering this is not a green area why this doesn't the former one is better but calm down and chill first we are still going to touch it so once i copy it to the other ones i'm not going to start doing the real deal so now i'm going to go to these models here you can see that i was in material before under this line i was in material now so i just clicked on model to access the model library then i'm going to go to nature under this nature i'm going to look for an ornamental grass so under this ornamental grass we are now going to do some things firstly we are going to go over here we are going to click on this brush too so under this brush we are going to maximize this radius so once you maximize the radius it will now be like you are applying a material so we are going to go to over to this density and increase it for now we are still going to change it but we are going to leave it up at about 85 percent now so depending on the system you are using this could be very heavy and i don't suggest you do it for a large span of green areas so i'm going to reduce this size to about here increase this random size to about here okay so once this is done now we are now going to scroll down and we are going to select the type of grass so we are going to be selecting this grass 09 cluster so once i select it you are going to see it's like as if a bucket is pouring here so it means it's going to apply this like a sort kind of material on this so i'm going to click on this and it's going to pour the grass at that distribution at this density i set it as so i'm also going to do the same for this and i'm going to do the same for this so this is a lot of green here i'm using a quite powerful system so that's why it's not hanging so after doing this we are going to click go over this green area and uncheck it then we're going to check another type of green area then for this i'm going to reduce the density to about this point then i'm going to do this one here pour it here and also pour it here as well so after doing this we are now going to go and apply another green area too so i'm going to uncheck this here and i'm going to scroll up and i'm just going to check this one here so for this one i'm going to reduce the density to as low as possible then i'm also going to reduce the size make sure the size is as small as possible as it can be then i'm just going to place this here i'm going to do the same here 
then i'm going to do the same so after doing this you can see the system your system should already be hitting by then which is showing that the thing is already getting heavy so now i'm going to click on escape so now we have created the green area we are now going to go and uh, apply some asphalt materials okay so to get asphalt material is sim pretty simple in d5 render you are just going to scroll down once you scroll down you are going to go to material first sorry okay so you are just going to click on outdoor ground click on this job down then go to asphalt materials then you are going to see nice old material so i usually like using this asphalt 02 i'm just going to click on it and apply it but when it comes in it comes in too dark and too glossy so i can click on i on my keyboard to edit this then once i click on it i to edit it i'm going to go over to this material editor then i'm going to go over here on this tri planner settings after i on this tri planner setting i'm going to change this base color sorry not this i'm under base color map i'm going to click on base color and make it lighter so once i've made it lighter i'm going to reduce the specular nature then i'm going to go here and i'm going to increase this stretch or rather reduce this stretch to increase the skill so once this is done this looks much better than before but i usually don't like using this asphalt material for my uh, asphalt roads in d5 render i usually like importing an asphalt material so there's one asphalt material i um, i downloaded from free pbr materials i'm going to drop the link in the description below so you can get some materials from there so i'm going to click on i on my keyboard again so once i click on this what i'm now going to do is i'm going to go to this base color map and i'm going to try and bring image all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to open our browser now and i'm going to show you how to get that material so once you open the browser we are just going to type in on your search engine we're going to type in free pbr materials once you type it and click enter you are just going to see this free pbr materials website so you are going to click on it to open it so once you've opened it we are just going to go once the thing is loaded completely um we are going to click on this search engine and we are just going to type asphalt once we click on asphalt it's going to search for us the asphalt pbr materials so we're just going to wait for the website to load once we see what we are looking for um we go for it so i'm just going to click on this read more this pebbled asphalt so you can see most of these materials are free you can see how nice the texture of this material is looking so i'm just going to click on this download to click on it to download the file here so you can see it's already downloaded so once it's completely downloaded i'm going to unzip it then i'm just going to go back to d5 render and load it into the project okay so now it's downloaded i'm just going to click on this um, icon here to open the file location then i'm just going to right click and i'm just going to uns extract the file extract it here so now the file is extracted what i'm going to do is i'm just going to click on d5 again i'm going to click on this material editor go to this base column map then go to download where the thing is so you can see automatically it has already led me there so i'm just going to click on this um, bitmap i'm going to just be arranging the bitmap accordingly so you can see this normal clear image here i'm going to put it under this one here then i'm going to click on this normal tool and i'm going to replace it with the normal um, image the normal image it has in the uh, folder so i'm going to click on it too so this um roughness specular i'm just going to delete this first because it's from the other material this roughness i'm going to click on it and i'm going to change it with height and i'm going to click ok so after doing this i'm just going to click on this ao too then i'm just going to look for ao here then i'm just going to click on it so after this is done i'm going to go back to this base color here i'm going to reduce this specular to zero i'm going to scroll down and i'm going to on this uv randomizer then i'm going to turn off this tri planner setting and just leave only the uv randomizer so i'm going to go to this base color here i'm going to drag it towards a more lighter color then i think i'll ask through the um, ready so it's looking kind of weird and a little bit abnormal so i'm going to turn off this um, uv randomizer and i'm just going to turn on this tri planner setting here okay let me just leave both of them off i think it's better that way so now this is done we are now going to apply the background um greenery or the background material for this base of the whole um, render so the, for this we are going to go to this natural raw materials and i'm just going to be scrolling down and i'm going to be looking for one of my favorite for background so i'm going to click on this grass gravel and i'm going to place it so after i've placed it i'm going to click on i to edit it then first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go and click on this base color and change the hue towards yellowish green so it's going to have this kind of and i'm going to drag it down towards dark okay let me just bring it to yellow a bit 
so after doing this i'm not going to go over here i'm going to go to this advanced settings here click on it okay then i'm just going to reduce this scale here reduce this value here to increase the scale so once the scale is as big as this i think this is okay i can just click on this and i can change this to custom settings then i can turn on this um tri planner then reduce value more again just a bit more okay so i think this is okay so this is giving this desert look i can increase it a bit so it won't be too much like that okay so i think leaving it like this i've turned on this uv randomizer i think it's better so all right so now this is out of the way we have applied for most of this site we are now going to go into this swimming pool so you can see this swimming pool i modeled it very well in rev so it still boils down to what i said earlier the better your model is better the render so now i'm going to apply some towels although i feel this swimming towels okay but i'm just going to apply a material from d5 for d5 6 so i'm going to go under this wall i'm going to go to i'm just going to click on this wall materials okay okay instead of all materials i'm going to click on wall towels sorry then i'm just going to click on this blue ceramic mosaic towels and i'm just going to put it it's pretty much the same thing with these towels and revit but i'm just applying this one so it's going to give more control hence since it's in d5 render okay so now we have applied material is really good and looking nice so now we are going to apply water materials to this okay so i'm going to click on i to apply a water material we are just going to click on i click on the supposed material so as you can see it because i named it water and revit doesn't mean it automatically become water in d5 so i'll need to change it i'm just going to scroll up here i'm going to on this material template icon then i'm just going to change it to i'm going to change it to water so once you change it to water you can now edit the color you can click on this color now i can mix towards green you can make it even red purple whatever color you want but of course we are going to leave it around the blue color then we're going to make it lighter we can increase the depth so it's going to darken the bottom but we can just keep it minimal so i think this is okay so you can also increase wave height so what you can do now is you can reduce this flow velocity you can go over to this normal and increase it to increase the depth of the wave height so you can see how it's looking now it's too much so i'm just going to reduce it this way then um we can always increase the scale or reduce the scale to uh, reduce the value to increase the scale okay so this is looking nice i think we have done very good work here so i'm just looking around for anything to edit so let's just edit the material of the fence i know the material of the fence will be linked to the building but since i said i'm starting the site let us do justice to it so i'm going to click on this material now in the same way we are going to now convert this to a metallic material instead of looking for a metallic material here okay so what we're going to do is we're going to reduce this sparklerness we're going to increase this metallic um, value here we're going to click on this color and we're going to change it towards gray so once we've done this we're going to reduce the roughness once you reduce the roughness you can see the metallic luster is already coming out we're going to scroll down we're going to look for this round corner settings click on it then we're still going to make it darker again so after doing this we can now click on this railing here or this metallic fence railing here and we can just copy it to this other one here go over here because you know we imported the fence as separate exports so we're just going to go around and place it in each of them so now we are going to go to the wall material so the wall material is just simple we are going to click on walls so we are going to see some options we can click on wall paint for more precision then i'm just going to scroll down and i'm just going to be using a basic wall paint which is this one so this is the white wall paint i'm just going to click on it so you can see it just edited tinted it a bit then i'm going to click on i on my keyboard to edit this material i'm going to change it because my modeling i usually like keeping the color of my walls between white and black but i can add a hue of some other color like let's say blue so i'm just going to adjust this blue here i'm going to go to this base color map i'm going to just reduce this saturation here it increase this white a bit then go back base color then i'm now going to see how i can control this blue okay so i think this is okay i think this is looking good so this is the our normal color so i can click on copy now and I, okay this is looking too blue let me click on i to edit one more time i'm just going to drag it uh -huh. so i'm going to click on copy and i'm just going to copy it here i'm going to go here copy it here copy this here so now i'm just going to paste this on this building here and i'm going to paste this color here. 
okay so now um i think we're done with the site material so let's go into the main building materials okay so now from the glass now since we have already done on the wall material so we can now go to the glass materials so the glass materials okay i actually don't like the color that this is given i would rather prefer it to be let's say instead of blue i would rather prefer it to be cream so i'm just going to drag this hue from brown to this cream and here so once i do this i'm just going to go over to copy and i'm going to copy it okay let me click on i again click on this copy this paste this here paste here paste and paste here okay so now this is done we are now going to go to glass materials so glass material is simple you can edit it to glass materials or you can apply it and for this glass material i'm just going to click on glass so once i click on glass i'm going to scroll down i'm going to see this normal glass material so i'm just going to apply it here then i'm going to click on i on my keyboard and i'm just going to select it so once i select this glass i'm not going to touch some parameter i'm going to increase this specular to about 0.4 the refraction is okay i'm going to click on the grass tint to just tint it just a bit towards dark then i think we are good to go then i can click on this copy and i can copy it throughout all the other glass materials in this project okay then uh, for a special case which is the railing i'm going to do something a bit special so for this railing instead of just making it more glass if i just apply this material i'm going to make it more tinted and more reflective so i'm going to click on i select it then i'm just going to increase this specularness and i'm going to click on this and make it darker so it's going to be more reflective and darker just to indicate it's a railing glass okay so now that is done we are now going to go and apply some mullion material so the mullion materials are similar to all these normal metallic materials so we can click on this material copy it and just paste it here so once we paste it here we can now work on it a bit before copying it to the rest of the millions i'm going to click on i click on this then i'm just going to go and reduce the specularness again increase the roughness just a bit and i think it's good to go i can just increase the darkness just a bit then click on copy paste it here paste it here too then um, i'm just going to paste this here too okay so now um i think we have done a remarkable job so far so we are just going to continue as we are going so now um, another thing we are going to apply material is i actually modeled a stone material here so i want to use some marble reflective marble here that is kind of complementary to this color so i'll be going for a dark colored marble so to do that i'm just going to go to stone in this material library here under this stone i'm going to see marbles and granite of course i'm going to go for marbles so i'm just going to look for a nice marble stone that is dark that will do the trick so i can click on this and be downloading it so another thing i forgot to mention is that most of this library you need to be downloaded them I may have worked with d5 for some time so a lot of them have already downloaded them before so that is why you just see me clicking on it again and it will just automatically be in d5 so we are just going to scroll and see if we can get the best possible marble we can use Okay, so a lot of these materials are good it just depends on how it's going to be used so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to download some options of some i'm just some i'm i'm, I'm currently admiring all right so i think i'm just going to try this one here so i'm going to try this saint laurent marble i'm just going to click and place it so i'm going to see how we implement the rest of this project so i'm just going to edit it a bit i'm going to click on i click on this then i'm going to click on this try planner settings then i'm just going to try and increase the reduce the value here to increase the scale so looking at this um it's actually not looking bad at all but i wish it could be more reflective which i can work on i can just reduce the roughness increase the metallicness and i think this is good but let me just try one or two sometimes in applying materials you might just be looking at materials and get too hung up so i'm just trying to see if i can get the best option possible so i think this even looks better so i'm going to click on i and i'm just going to click on this try planner settings then i'm going to reduce this value to increase the scale then of course i'm going to increase this metallic and i'm going to reduce this roughness okay so i think this is nice so now i think when we we'll appreciate this um, model in more is when we start doing some lighting on it okay so now that's out of the way we're going to apply some materials for these floors okay so we're going to go to our um flooring i think 
so once we go to um, ceramic tiles under this okay we can see ceramic tiles here we are going to scroll down and we can click on this jazz white which is one of my favorite floor materials so i'm just going to click on this jazz white click on escape click on i on my keyboard click on it and just copy it accordingly so once i've copied it to all the floors and i make sure it's on all the floors of this building i'm now going to go to these doors here so firstly we have an issue with this door there is a, a part of it that is not meant to be um, visible here so instead of going back to revit and working on it again we can click on i click on this then we can just change this to white after we change this to white we are going to reduce um after we change the glass to white, we can now reduce some things. We are going to reduce the refraction. And once we reduce the refraction, it's going to become invisible. So I'm just going to click on this and click on this door here. So instead of doing much on the door, I'm just going to reduce the roughness a bit. So it's going to be a bit reflective. I'm going to go to this handle here and I'm going to reduce the roughness. So it's going to be metallic and reflective. Okay, so now this is done. We are going to go over here and... Uh, we are just going to touch something. So within this railing, have some ma a material between them. So this material is very small. So I need to reduce the speed of the camera movement to actually access this material. So I'm going to, going to zoom in here and carefully select the material. It's currently a blue glass. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change it to black and I'm going to change it. Click on this material library and change it to custom. Then I'm just going to make it some dark metallic stuff okay so now this is done i can click on this and increase the speed so now we are going to apply some waters here so we are going to apply some nice waters fitting for this building so for that i'm going to go to world house so under this world house we can now see some masonry work some bricks and other stuff so because of the theme of this kind of building i'm going to just up look for some nice bricks so i'm going to try this brown jumping bricks and see how it looks Alright, so now it's downloaded, I'm just going to click on it and I'm just going to place it here. So once it's placed, uh, I'm just going to wait for it to apply. So you can see this brown um, bricks, so I think it's looking nice. So I can click on I on my keyboard, click on this, just re reduce, the, reduce the value to increase the scale of this. And I'm just questioning how realistic this thick material is looking. I'm really questioning it because I'm not really feeling it. So I can scroll down and look for some other options. Okay okay so now we have applied the materials i think these dark stones are better so i'm going to click on i click on this then i'm going to reduce the value to increase the scale a bit so this scale is too much so i'm just going to reduce it just to about this so i think this is nice and this is looking wonderful so now we are now going to apply some brown concrete on this um, bricks here this self this interchanging bricks which is part of the design one of the highlights of the design so i'm just going to go under concrete here so once i go to this concrete i'm just going to click on this rough concrete I'm going to click on this rough concrete 09 so once i apply it i'm going to click on i on my keyboard select this then i'm just going to go to this base color map and i'm going to change it towards brown so once i do it i'm just going to go over and change it towards brown zoom out then so it's looking more of greenish so i'm going to drag it towards the brown spectrum i'm just going to increase it towards this way here Okay, so once I do this, I'm going to go to try planner, click on this and reduce the value to increase the scale a bit. Then I think this is good. Okay, um, it still to be a bit browner. So I'm just going to click on this and make it lighter in color. Uh, then I think this is good the way it is. Okay, so now we have done this, we are now going to apply the door material. So for these doors, we are just going to be using normal timber. So I'm going to go over to this material library here and I'm going to look for wood. So under this wood, I'm just going to be trying to select a simple wood color. So I'm going to scroll down. And I'm going to lose this light brown maple. So I'm just going to place this here. I'm going to click on I on my keyboard, select this, turn on this tri planner settings, then just click on this duplicate materials, paste this here, zoom in a bit, and paste this here as well. So I think we are done with the doors for now. So now we are done with the doors. We are now going to apply some roof materials and some other things like, for instance, we are going to apply on this roof slab here. So we are going to um, just, for the roof slab, I think we can use our rough concrete. I'm going to go to I, select this concrete material, click on copy, and I'm just going to paste it here. 
So after doing that, we are not going to apply some glass materials here because these are some frosted glass for to throw light on this um, terrace. So I'm going to click on I. Um, I'm just going to go over instead. I'm going to go back to this material library. I'm going to look for glass. Under this glass, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to apply this frosted hammer glass. So this is very nice. It creates a nice effect and I think it will be good. Alright, so now this is done. We're just going to click on this and we're going to apply it here. So we're going to click on I. Select this. Then we're just going to reduce this value a bit. And I think the glass is good to go. So now we are going to apply some roofing materials here. So for this roof, we are going to go to roof. Under this roof, we are just going to pick this our normal roof tiling. I think we can use this red roof tiles just to add some color to it. Then I'm just going to paste it here. All right. So I think we have done justice to the material application, but we have one last thing to do. So we're going to work on those last few things. So I'm going to click on I. So this stuff here, I modeled here. This thing that looks like dark bands. So I'm going to slow down. Just I've slowed down the speed of my camera. So I'm just going to show you how to do it. So what I mean by the bands, I mean this dark band, so not this orange one. This orange one is to apply some mosaic um, traditional materials, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm just going to click on this now. So once I've clicked on this, I'm just going to go over to this material editor here. Then I'm going to click on emissive. So once I click on emissive, it's going to start illuminating. Then I'm going to go and click or check this temperature instead. I'm going to change it towards the warmer spectrum. Then I'm going to impute a value of 50. Once I've done this, I'm just going to click on copy and I'm going to zoom out. Click on this to increase speed, zoom out a bit. Then I'm just going to go again to this LED light below here and I'm going to paste it here. Then I'm going to click on I, select this, then I'm just going to change this color. Okay, the color is already dark. I can think it's all set and good. So you can see, you can see this LED light I've applied here. You can see this LED light too here. So this is just how to apply LED light in D5 render or materials. So now we're going to apply some mosaic materials here. So for those mosaic materials, we need to download them. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to open my browser. I'm going to click on a new tab. So I'm going to just search for mosaic bitmaps. So there are many websites where you can get it from. We can just click on images and see what it have what it has so i think i like this one so i'm just going to click on this and i'm just going to go and search for where the images are, are coming from all right so we are able to download one mosaic materials if you are wondering how i did it the site is wallpaper access so you can check it out when you want to apply your own so once i click on this i'm just going to click on this material i'm going to go to this base color map click on this and i'm just going to search for that mosaic material i downloaded the mosaic bitmap so i'm just going to click on it and i'm going to load it in so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go over to this tri planner here then i'm just going to reduce the value to increase the scale so if i'm not filling this material i'm going to go to this base color map and i'm going to change it to white so the white just enhances the whole thing so the whole idea of this was just to give this mosaic um, material vibes so i think this serves just that so now we are done with this i think we have basically covered the material aspect of this build so now we are now going to go into the interior lighting the interior lighting of this building so by interior lighting i'm going to cover how to put lights in strategic points in the building that is going to expose some nice aspects of it all right so let's talk about lighting in d5 render okay so if you are applying artificial light in d5 render there are just some basic principles you need to know so for you need to understand that d5 lighting especially from materials work with a reflective principle so what this reflective principle means is that before lights will come out from this um this space now, like we're outside and light will come out you need to place it in a way that is going to reflect on something to shoot it out so for example the best thing i used to suggest for interior lighting is we are going to click on this rectangular light so but before we place any rectangular light we are going to do another important thing so that is creating layers for light so creating layers for light does is that anytime you want to offer the light in d5 render it will be easy for you so i'm just going to go over to this icon here click on this plus and it's going to create a new layer then i'm going to right click and i'm going to click on rename then i'm going to call this lighting layer so once this is done, the lighting layer is created. We are now going to click on this rectangular light and just going to click on it and place one here. 
so we are now going to click before we place anyone or do anything we are just going to click on the light and make sure click on this drop down icon and make sure it falls under this lighting layer so once this is done now we are just going to click on this light and we are going to drag it to a position then we are starting the parameter firstly we are going to drag and increase this attenuation radius we are going to increase the intensity to 50 then we are going to go over here and change this light to warm light so it's going to give a nice effect so you can see that the light is already popping out from here so what we're going to do is we're just going to drag this light up because this light actually come we can still increase the attenuation radius more and then we're just going to place it click on this central box so another thing to note is that while placing or moving materials in d5 you can see these three arrows so these three arrows just represent the three axes in which you can move it so you can move this up and down sideways front and back you can also go over to this circle here move this on the horizontal plane uh, move this on the vertical plane and move it on this other vertical plane here so it's just self-explanatory if you want to rotate it you can see this curve line rotate it at any distance you can always go over to here and change the impute the value of angle you want to rotate it at that kind of stuff so you can see this center box here this cube you can use it to move it and place it on any 3d plane just as you see i'm freely placing it anywhere now so once it's done we're just going to go over here to adjust the size of this light so i'm going to click on so what does is that it changed these two dimensions so if i click and i to three meters it's going to increase the two dimensions at one so i'm just going to hold this one here i'm going to hold shift then just click on one line here then it's going to duplicate automatically so you can see that if you look at this space now it's already shooting out with light so another thing is that one principle another principle i used to do is that i don't usually slide through it so it's not going to be too much so i will hold shift click on this box here and place bring this light here so once i've placed light in like this space now i can maybe skip this second space and i can maybe go to this third space or since it forms a cohesive character i can still leave it here and i can just copy this here so the same thing like all these small windows i think it's essential for them to have light so i can place this here i can skip this one here click on this one on this ground floor i can just hold shift and copy it here so for this light in the state i can just place it here i think here is enough i can click on this one here click on shift copy it to this space here zoom inside this space here and just look up and just place it here so once i've done this i think i can move this here okay so i think for now the lighting interior inside the building is pretty good so now and after plating this interior light we'll need to place some point lights and some point lights so those are important as well we'll need them in some of these out exteriors and some two-way lights as well so for this we'll need to be bringing our own lights from revit okay like our own component lights. so if you can download this light component from different modeling softwares me i usually model some of my own on revit and i've saved it inside this project so if you want to get the resource files of this project i'm going to leave the link it will be in the description you can do it yeah it's going to cost you a token but it's a way of supporting the channel basically so if you want to support us you can um, do that as well and you get the resource file all the component including the d5 file of this model not the darling file you are going to get it in the in that um description okay so let's go and so most of these components that i want to bring in now i've already saved them previously in d5 render so i don't need to go and start bringing them from outside i'm just going to click on this local library so i'm just going to use a some so i'm going to have materials too and i have models too so these models includes all the models i used to use and all those stuff so we're just going to look for some point lights to place here so you can see that the component is already here so this is a d5 spotlight i've used before so it's very helpful i can use it to place spotlight you can see the material is already luminous so i can drag this down a bit so if i zoom in it's not going to be too um it's not going to be engraved into the wall so once i place this light now i'm also going to place another light now so i'm going to click on search and i'm going to search to a wall sounds i'm just going to click on search wall so you are going to see this wall sounds here i modeled it as well so like i said i'm going to place this here so this was basically throw lights in two ways so once i've done this i'm to adjust this and place this here 
okay then i'm going to close this now so remember that i talked about lighting layer so the lighting layer doesn't apply for the lighting component it only applies for the light itself so it's important to take cognizance of that that is why i left this at default layer so another thing to know that it's always good to make sure you look at this tick box attached layer it means that anything i'm placing now will automatically be in this default layer if you put it on lighting layer it's quite risky because you don't know when you're already placing components and you're placing the wrong components under lighting layer so it's always good to leave it at default so you will not be seeing surprises later okay so now we have placed this one here we are now going to start placing the light attached to them before we start copying them okay so now we are just going to go over here now um click on this so we're going to click on this light icon here we're going to be spotlight and we're going to place one here so this spotlight we are not going to make it too much we're just going to make the intensity 25 so after making the intensity 25 we're just going to reduce this um and temperature we are going to leave the temperature just somewhere here and um, the attenuation radius the cone angle we are going to reduce it a bit so once we have done this we can now click on this and we can zoom in here we can reduce the camera speed so we'll have more control hold shift to increase the speed a bit even in the low speed now i'm going to hold control and select this so once i've hold, held control let me do it again click on this light hold control click on this to select both of them i'm not going to go over here now and i'm going to going to right click and i'm just going to click on group so what this thing does is that it's going to group them together but we forgot one important thing so i'm going to hit ctrl z if you click on this light we forgot to click on this and change it to lighting layer so now we are just going to double click a hold control select the second one right click and group so now i'm going to use this opportunity to show you the importance of layers in your um, d5 render for instance if i go over here and i click on this eye icon here i'm going to hide all the lights all the light configures in this space so you can see how all the lights have turned off but if i click on this light layer all of them will appear again so that is basically the importance of layer so now i'm going to click on this and i'm going to start adjusting this to the appropriate position i'm going to place one here i'm going to hold shift um i'm just going to place another one here i'm going to place another one here as well um then i think i'm going to place some here i'm going to hold shift copy this one place this one here Then I'm going to drag this down a bit. So once it's appropriate, I'm going to shift this here. And I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to place this here. I'm going to hold shift, place one here. And I'm going to hold shift, place one here. Then I'm going to hold control, select these two. Then I'm going to rotate the camera to a nice angle. I'm going to hold shift, place this one here hold shift again in another interval of two place this here hold shift again and place this here so now i've placed a lot of this light i can go to this level here too <clears throat> click on this then i'm just going to hold shift too and i'm just going to copy this and place this here then i'm going to go over to this region here i'm just going to basically do the same thing place one here place another one here place another one here place another one here go shift place another one here place another one all right so now we have done this and we have placed this light we are just going to click on this and we're going to do the same for this wall sounds but for this wall sounds we're going to be adding instead of one way control z i mistakenly started rotating it i'm going to be adding two lights instead of one so i'm just going to put it to position here I can increase this size to let's say 300 so just to make it a bit more pronounced then what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to click on this light fixture here and i'm just going to click on this wall um spot, spotlight and i'm going to place it here so after placing this spotlight i'm going to click on it i'm going to click on this drop down and change it to lighting layer then i'm going to change to 50. Then once I've done this, I'm going to increase this temperature a bit. I'm going to reduce the cone angle and I'm going to increase the attenuation radius a bit. So I'm going to even reduce this more to 25. So after this, I can reduce this temperature. I don't want it to be too much. Let's leave it at this. Then I'm going to hold shift here and I'm going to drag this one. So after dragging this one up, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this rotate and rotate it by 180 degrees. Let me hit Ctrl Z to get the rotation right. So I'm going to click on this rotate it here then i'm going to drag it down so after doing this now 
I'm going to make sure the thing is in lighting layer, the light in particular. Then I'm going to hold Ctrl, select this sons, select this second light, right click and group it together. So if I turn off this lighting layer, I'm going to see it's going to off. You see how nice this works. So once I've done this, I'm not going to hold shift to copy this around. So I'm going to hold shift, drag this here. I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to rotate it at 90 degrees and I'm going to place it here and push it here then push it here so this is nice so I'm going to go over here as well I'm going to click on this I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to place this here then I'm just going to drag this up I'm going to drag this out a bit drag this here okay so now this is done I'm going to hold shift again and I'm going to rotate this here to about 90 degrees then I'm going to push this here and drag this down so now another lighting fixture I want to do is um, you know in this um, terrace here we are going to need some nice kind of chandelier light here so this chandelier light is just for the occupants enjoying this terrace here so we are going to go to this local library again i'm going to close this and i'm going to go under this category here create so under this category this outdoor light so i'm going to go to interior light then under this interior light i'm just going to click on this pendant light here so what this pendant light does is that it just kind of create a nice outdoor light here so i'm just going to drag it and place it around here so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to drag this down to about this point here and i'm just going to scroll down here and i'm just going to try and adjust it manually or what i can do now is once i adjust it to this point here i can just drag it down here i can click on t to access this top view so this top view is going to give me a more pronounced position of it so i think i've centralized it here so i'm going to go to p again so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to bring in another light fixture and this time i'm going to be creating this point light here so once i click this point light i'm just going to place it here and i'm just going to try and centralize it so i'm just going to be zooming in small small so i'm going to reduce the speed of the camera and I'm just going to try and click on this 3D gizmo here and place it somewhere here. Drag it down a bit. Place it inside here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to the temperature to about this position here. So once I've reduced this temperature now, I'm going to click on it and I'm going to change it, the light to lighting layer. I can increase the attenuation rate, then I can click on this and I can increase the speed. So now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to select this, I'm going to hold control, select this lighting fixture, then I'm just going to close this, then I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on group and group them together. So now we're going to click on T to top view, then we're going to hold shift to copy it. So I'm going to hold shift here and I'm going to copy one here. I'm going to hold shift here and I'm going to copy another one here Then I'm going to click on P. So this is basically the light fixtures of this project It's looking nice and good. Okay. So now we are done with the light fixtures. We are going to now place some curtains here. So these curtains, you know that this lights, this room is looking kind of empty and there's also an option to um, kind of mitigate this emptiness in a room. That's what they call interior parallax. So if you go to assets, you go to online here. You are now going to scroll down. You are going to just look for interior. You are going to click on models. Then you are just going to look for interior parallax. So this interior parallax just has some, it will I say some images you can use to kind of buffer your interior and exterior spaces. Like for instance, I'm going to place this image here and I'm going to drag it back here. So you can see from outside, this looks kind of like a living room. You can increase the intensity of the lighting. You can make the temperature warmer. You can increase the light intensity here. So it just adds to the realism. But me, I'm not really a fan of this interior parallax. So especially when it's this bright, I can reduce the brightness here. And just do a lot of things but i'm just going to delete it for now but that is just something you can try out on your own so for now i'm going to go into my local library and i'm going to be adding some curtains so i'm going to go to this local library and i'm just going to search curtains okay 
so once i click on cutting i'm going to click on enter so i can just click on remove this s click on enter okay so now this is not the cutting i'm looking for so i'm just going to manually try and get the cutting i'm looking for all right so i've seen the cutting i want to use so i'm just going to place this here so what i'm going to do now for this cutting i'm going to look at this central material of the cutting that is translucent i'm going to click on i click on this then i'm going to go over to this uh, material plate then i'm just going to change it to cloth. then once i change it to cloth, i'm going to increase this fall off opacity to about 70. so after i've done this i can click on this i can click on this here and i can just try and make it as light as possible but it seems it's already as light as possible then i can click on copy duplicate copy this here copy this here copy this here so once i've copied it to every part of this our cutting is good to go so i'm just going to put this cutting here i'm going to go inside this space rotate it to about 90 degrees drag it out a bit i'm going to make sure it doesn't pass this glass so by doing so i can go inside and i'm just going to click on click on this center 3d gizmo here place this here hold shift place this here so i'm going to click on copy again hold shift to copy this here rotate it to about 90 degrees so i can go to this z change it to zero impute the value then i can put this here so after i've done this now i'm going to hold shift again to copy this so we have some cuttings placed horizontally and some cuttings placed vertically so i'm just going to be cutting the, um copying this one so i'm going to click on this hold shift copy it to this hold shift again copy it here then i'm going to hold shift copy it up upstairs here then i'm going to hold shift again copy it upstairs here okay so i'm now going to go over here and i'm going to go to into another this space here then i'm going to click on this cutting here then i'm going to zoom out i'm going to hold shift copy it here then i'm just going to drag this here i'm going to drag this here so i'm going to drag this to this point here then i'm just going to click on shift and drag it here up so once i've dragged it up i'm just going to click and i'm going to place this here so i'm going to hold shift place this here i'm going to go over to this icon this object icon select this here once both of them are selected i'm going to hold shift to copy it here so i think for the most part we have copied enough cuttings around in this project we can copy it one more time to this part here click on this hold shift click on shift and just copy it here so i think we have placed enough cuttings and enough of this stuff so now we are done with um we are done with um, the interior lighting and the curtains. We are now going to enter the composition of the renders. Alright, so we are going to be working on the composition. So for this composition, I'm going to start from like a macro stage to a micro stage. So I'm going to be starting from ma the major stuffs on the road like the uh, the background buildings. Then I'm going to go into the major green areas. Then I'm not going to street lights and stuff like that. So let's start from the background building. So to do that, I have some background buildings because the background buildings in D5 that is accessible through D5 online library are actually big. For instance, let's just look for some of them so if i go to outdoor now then once i go to outdoor i can click on buildings so you are going to see a list of commercial you can see this commercial building we can be downloading it but these are majorly big big buildings so instead of doing that i'm just going to go to my local library i've loaded some 3ds mass buildings that i've saved before so we can use it for this so what i'm just going to do is i'm just going to click on this outdoor if i don't see the buildings i'm looking for i'm just going to click on background so these are some background buildings so i'm going to click on this v-ray 18 building so like i said i'm going to leave all these things to be accessible the link will be in the description below so if you want to get them you can get all of them so i'm going to place the second one so one thing too that is important in buildings is that when you place a building in d5 render it's always good to create another layer for them because if you are picking an area of use you will not need those background buildings so i'm just going to click on plus icon and i'm going to right click and rename this as background building okay so once i've created this layer and i'm going to click on this two building hold control click on this drop down and change them to background buildings now another thing i'm going to do is i'm going to click on i on my keyboard so i'm going to click on this i'm going to click on copy then i'm just going to copy this glass material here and i'm also going to copy the glass material here 
so now what i've done is um very simple so now once i've placed this background buildings i can now go to some of these views now so i'm going to go to this scene we worked on here so it's important that you always go back to your scenes you're working on to actually check how the view is looking because in 3d is the scene that is um will i say one of the most important things so what we can do now is to rotate this to about 180 degrees i think this 180 then just drag it and push it back to about this position here so once we've done this i'm just going to <laughs> for now and i'm just going to go between these two views and i'm just going to try to see which one is my favorite view so i think i'm just going to render this one okay so now we have done this you can see this we can click on this and we can just click on this to hide this fence here then we're going to update this view then another thing we can do is we can now click on this and we can just drag this to this point here and we can go back to this view now that we've created so you can see that um the two buildings are showing in the background another thing to take cognizance of you don't want these two buildings to be dragging attention with this main building so we can do stuff like push them back from this view click on this and also push this back from this view so this is going to give this building more reference that like it should have so we can drag this front a bit then we can just drag this backwards push this backwards here so now this is done we are in a good position now so now we are going to be copying some light and adding it to this background buildings so this background buildings will also have light in the ambient scenes we want to render so i'm going to click on p i'm going to um, click on one of these lights here I'm going to click on one of the rectangular lights. Then I'm just going to hold shift because I need some of those lights in these spaces. I'm going to hold shift here. Then I can click on this hold shift here. Okay, you see I forgot to just copy light in some particular places. Then I'm going to hold shift and drag it out to copy it to this place here. So once I've placed it in these background buildings, I can now just adjust it as I'm copying it. So I'm just going to hold shift, copy it here. Hold shift, copy this here hold shift just here and hold shift here then to this highest floor okay ctrl z click on this hold shift here copy this here to this highest floor push this backwards a bit then i'm going to click on this and place it somewhere here then drag it down okay so now i think we have placed in majority of i've placed inside this building now what i'm now going to do is i'm just going to hold shift again and copy it another one here then i'm going to click on this light here i'm just going to hold control and select all of them i'll be careful while selecting them so i'm not going to select the overall model itself like what i've just done now hold control hold control so once i've selected all of them i'm just going to right click and i'm going to click on group okay so this is now a single group even though they have lighting layer and background this time. so now i'm going to go over to this um, building too and i'm going to just do the same thing i'm going to adjust this here and i'm going to move this I'm going to move this here copy this hold shift and copy this here and i'm also going to hold shift here i'm going to drag this to this point here i'm going to drag this here move this here then i'm going to hold shift here as well so i don't know why this light isn't visible but i'm just going to try and see why so so i'm going to drag this here okay so let me just drag this to this position here okay so i think this is good so i can just hold shift here and copy this here so now i think we're just going to do the same thing here i'm going to hold control i'm going to hold control here i'm going to hold control here hold control here then i'm just going to select this model hold control select this model here then i'm going to right click and i'm going to group it together so once i've done this now you are going to see if we go back to this scene now we are working on if i click on off lighting layer now the light is going to off if i click on off background buildings it's going to off so i'm going to on everything back so that is just what i want to achieve so i'm going to click on p again to exit the two-point perspective mode then now what i'm going to do now is i'm not going to start placing the major greenies for this i'm going to click on t to access top views so while placing major greenies is always good to place some the first um, layers of green areas are usually are the sun breakers so these sun breakers are like coniferous plants at outside the, the site so i'm just going to go to uh, um, assets i'm going to go to online i'm going to go to model 
under this model i'm going to go to nature under this nature i'm now going to go to conifers so under this conifers i'm going to be placing some nice conifers so another thing to note uh, while placing components in d500 especially greening you should always look out for this icon if this icon is here it means this uh, model is dynamic and dynamic meaning if you're on the wind setting is going to be animating with the wind that is what dynamic basically means it can move around when animated so this is um, a good advantage and it's always good to use components like this although the flip side is that they can be quite heavy so heavy so it's good to keep note of that so i'm just going to click on this conifer here i can just tweak some of this parameter like the size and randomize size so i'm just going to place the first one somewhere here then you are going to see this para the characteristics of these two parameters i set is going to be applying as we place them for instance if i reduce size now you are going to see it's going to become smaller if i increase size you're going to see it's going to be bigger so let me just keep the size at a bit up like 30 percent so i'm going to place one here 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 so these are basically the sound breakers so i'm going to place another one here i'm going to place one here another one here another one here then another one here So after I've placed these sun breakers, I'm now going to start placing the palm trees. So this palm, I'm just going to click on palm trees. I'm going to look for some nice palm. So personally, I usually prefer this palm tree. It's a free palm tree. You don't need to have D5 Pro to use it. So we can just reduce the size here and i can just place this palm okay i'm going to reduce the size more so this palm is going to be in some parts of the site so i'm going to be placing one here i'm just going to be placing it at good intervals so it's not going to be too much i'm going to place one here i'm going to reduce the size again and place another one here then i'm going to place one here 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 and um, let's say maybe one here so after we have placed these um, palms, we can now place some other palms here, maybe along this um, greenery here, can place some here, just to add. Can increase this a bit. okay so now after doing this now we are now going to be placing some broad leaf plants so these broad leaf plants are like to serve us um just to give this a more dense background to just give life into this scene now because currently it's looking like a desert so we're going to go to broad leaf plants so it's always good to take cognizance of this point while placing this broad leaf plant it's always good to place broad leaf plants that can serve as filters to filter out sunlight so it will not be too dense like for instance let's say something like something like this is is a very dense tree so a light won't pass through it but if i select something like this increase the size a bit you can now see this not too dense so i can just increase the size and place it at some strategic point so i can place one here i can just place one here I can place another one here place maybe another one here too and place another one here then we can go and place some other type of broadleaf plants so these broadleaf plants i'm going to place now are the ones that is going to serve as like the sun breaker from a distance so i'm going to scroll down and i'm going to place this here so after i place this i'm going to increase the size again then i'm just going to place this here place this here place this place this here place this here then now i'm going to go back and i'm going to place some particular broadleaf plants so this broadleaf i want to place now they are the ones i'm going to be placing within the site so these ones are will i use the word a balanced kind of blood leaf not too big and can just cast the right amount of shadows and sound serve as, serve as a shading umbrella for our view so i'm just going to click on it and i'm going to try and place it here so it's good to take cognizance of you need to save your project after making some progress now so i'm just going to go over here and i'm going to place one here and maybe one maybe somewhere here i'm just going to place it at these corners okay so now this is done now i think we're in a good position so we have placed some big trees we have placed some broadleaf trees so we can just adjust some of these trees here some of these key ones here to be closer to this view because they are going to like serve us kind of like 
the main stuff in the 3d so i can drag this closer to this point so now after um this is done we are now going to start placing some shrubs now so these shrubs are like the flower or shrubs that are going to be placed at repetitive intervals so some people in if you are some people especially people that are maybe not too conversant with um not too experienced with 3d render they usually place this kind of greeneries in a way that it will be kind of looking too uniform so uniformity is good but uniformity is not realistic like that because nature is kind of randomized a bit so now we are going to go to ornamental okay not ornamental grass we're going to go to shrubs first to see if we can see some nice shrubs so we can use this if um elex vomitoria i hope i pronounced it well then i'm going to increase the size here yeah? and i'm just going to place some of them here can increase the size a bit i'm going to place one maybe okay reduce it a bit i'm going to place one maybe here 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 and maybe here as well then i'm going to go over here and and i'm going to just place it here 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 too here as well here as well here as well here just basically place this now so i can reduce this randomized size so it will be consistent to reduce the size overall then i'm just going to place it around this point here okay so another important thing now is once we have placed this we're now going to go into this flowering shrub so this flowering shrub we're now going to place something more lively now we're going to be placing something like this with more flare so in the same vein we're going to increase this size parameter and we're going to be placing it somewhere like here we're going to place one here place another one here place one here just like that we can place it in like a zigzag pattern up until this point so i think this is enough so i can just place one here then another thing is you can place some flowering some flowers but this should just be a strategic point like one two three then we can just place maybe some of them around just this key point here nothing too much maybe you can place another one here so i think that is enough for now okay maybe one at this corner that is just me doing extra so after placing this green we are going to click on p so this p now after we click on p we are now going to go to our 3d view and see how it's looking so we are just going to go to this view so now from this view now we are now going to adjust the position of some of them for instance now we can see that this particular green area we can move it front now we can click on v now and just change this reduce the size here so once we reduce the size to this point we can click on v here and click on this then click on v then just reduce this a bit then click on v again to change it back to movement so for this now you can see we have the same issue of clustering with this we can just adjust some of them click on this one here and just move it backwards here so what you can do now is you can click on this building here because these greeneries have obstructed our building so we can click on this building here and just click on move to maybe move it to this background here so it's going to create a dense background so i can click on this palm here i can click on v this v can now increase the size or i think reducing it will be better and click on v again so now this is done we are now going to look for a way to create a palm so i'm going to click on this tree and i'm going to move this tree over to this point then i'm just going to drag it down click on v to reduce the size very well then i'm going to click on v again so this v is now going to adjust the position of this to about this point here so what this does is that this is kind of going to control the amount of things i'll be seeing on this view so i can click on this um, building now and i can shift it here so this is just me just trying to control the composition of this render i feel this tree is not at the best position it could be so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to click on this and i'm going to just move it backwards then i'm just going to click on this plant here and i'm just going to drag it to this point here then after doing that i'm going to click on v i'm going to increase the size of this i'm going to click on v now and i'm just going to drag this back here so this is going to sound like an umbrella for this view so now i'm going to hit ctrl s to save our progress then i'm just going to click on p now i'm just going to click on this and try and move this so i'm going to change this layer 
to background so what this does is that if i go to this area view now and in this area view i don't want this background to be showing i can just go and turn off this background layer and it's going to hide all the background stuff here okay so let's go back to this view that we are working on and we are paying key attention so now we have done this i think we have done a lot of setup so now i'm not going to start working on the exterior light so the exterior light basically governs the light that will be supporting this site and the it ranges from street lights to bollard light so that is basically what this exterior light is going to cover so i'm going to click on p to access the 3d perspective view and i'm going to be bringing in some exterior light for my own library so as just as before d5 has has his own um, library of um, exterior light if you go to assets if you go to online you can go to models then you can just look for let me just click on street lights so once you click on street lights you should be able to see some result so let me just drag this here and then um, click on escape for now so you can see some street lights already loaded in but this street light is not what I'm looking for, so I can close this. So I'm going to go to my own local library and I'm just going to go to all models. Then under this all models, I'm just going to search lights and click enter. So this is going to bring out all the lights I have. So I'm just going to search for the street lights I'm looking for in particular. Or I can go to this outdoor category. Let me just check okay so i think this basically contains all the lights i'm looking for so i'm going to click on this group 02 so this is basically a street light i've used before so i'm just going to place it here so what i'm going to do is i'm not going to adjust the position of this light so as you can see this light comes in with not only the light but it comes in with um not only the light fixture it comes in with the light itself i've placed in d5 and these are d5 lights so we're going to go over to this group click on this drop down icon then select this tool spotlight then change it from background to lighting so remember the issue i told you about leaving this tick on you can see this thing came out came in with this background um background building as the layer so i'm going to change it back to default then i'm going to click on this uh, main light source itself then change it to default here so this is now like a mixed layer group of objects so now what we can do is we can just tweak the materials a bit click on this material increase the metallic distance and reduce the roughness then click so this still will give us an autographic view click on escape then we're just going to click on this street light we're going to rotate it a bit and we're going to copy it at intervals and place it on the streets like where it belongs i'm going to place this here i'm going to place this here I'm going to hold shift place this here I'm going to hold shift place this here i'm going to hold shift place this here shift place this here shift place this here shift place this here then i'm going to hold shift and place this here so now i'm just going to be adjusting this to kind of place in a zigzag interlocking manner i'm also going to just copy this street light along this plane okay so now this is done now we are now going to click on p and we're going to see how it's coming out so we're going to go back to our view so you can see this coming out well but we need to adjust some things firstly we need to move this one so i'm just going to click on this and i'm going to move this somewhere here i think somewhere here should be okay okay this will be interrupting this will be too big so you see the issue with some 3ds is very difficult to solve this kind of stuff because of this positioning so i'm just going to move this somewhere here i think this is okay so now i've placed this here we have our street lights and we have this so we're going to start placing the bollard light so bollard light the same way i'm going to bring in a bollard light i use so you can download different kind of bollards but me i usually prefer this particular bollard light so i'm going to place this here I'm going to close this here, close this um, D5 library, and I'm now going to click on P to exit this two point perspective view. So now we've placed this, we're just going to adjust the position now. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to open this group here by clicking this drop down icon. Then we're just going to click on this point light here. We're going to reduce this temperature, it doesn't need to be too serious like this. We're going to reduce this light to about 35 so it won't be too intense then we're going to go over here and we're going to change the delay layer to a lighting layer 
okay so i think this is enough for it it shouldn't be too serious like that then i'm just going to adjust the position a bit so now i've done this i can now click on this group as a whole and i can start moving it since it now has the lighting layer so now i'm just going to click on t so this t is like the top view i'm going to zoom in here and look through very well and i'm just going to copy this here then i'm going to hold shift key hold shift key copy this to this point here hold shift key to copy it here hold shift copy it here hold shift copy this here then hold shift again copy this here hold shift here to copy this here hold shift here copy this here hold shift here copy this and i think hold shift here to copy this and hold shift here so if you go back to this view now you can see we have placed this light well and they are looking very nice so now we are now going to start placing some other special components so these special components include like pool seats and the seats that is going to be in this terrace here so you can see this cutting shooting out from here i can always adjust it and rectify the issue so i'm going to click on p and this special model also includes flower pots plants that we are going to place here so what we are going to do now is we are first going to be placing um some dinings okay so i'm just going to go to assets under this asset let me just um, minimize this a bit i'm now going to go to this um indoor or outdoor furniture this this is my own local library uh, so i have a lot of components here okay so i'm just going to look from them and let's see so i'm going to click on this group one here so this is a kind of outdoor dining setup i have i've used to work on some previous projects so i'm going to be bringing it into this project and i'm just going to be putting it inside this balcony on top of this balcony here so i'm just going to drag this here and um, i'm going to hold shift copy this here so i'm going to hold shift too i'm going to copy this here as well i'm going to hold shift and i'm going to copy this here so this has already filled up here so now i'm going to be looking for some nice pool chairs to put in this area or some nice i'll just an outdoor seat that i can use i'll put it maybe i'm going to put it here so this is kind of a nice place to just put some seats so i'm going to go to asset for this i'm going to be going to d5's online library so you can see how this place is looking beautiful on its own already so i'm going to go to this outdoor all right so now i've seen outdoors i'm now going to look for some outdoor furnitures and once i click on furnitures i'm not going to see some stuff so i'm going to bring in this bench i'm also going to bring in this outdoor dining set i think this is nice for a pool okay i think so far this should do this should pretty much do what i'm looking for so since we have this pool here i can just play some seats here Maybe I can place some bench here. Then I can go over to this point here. I can hold shift, copy this bench here. I can also go and put place this dining set here. And place this dining set here just for some nice outdoor dining then i can go shift this back a bit then i can go to my own local library and i can look for some pools chairs so i'm just going to click on pool and click on pool so what i'm going to do i'm just going to bring in this pool chair and i can place one here click on close then rotate this then once i place it i can now place shift here and just place like three pool chairs so this is nice and all so i can still click on this bollard light here click on this hold shift copy this here then i can just click on this shift copy this here as well just lit up this place click shift copy this here so this is like the grand entrance into the pool so so far you can see the amount of um, components we are placing here so we are going to go back to this view now and uh, we are going to see what we've done all right so now we are going to just be placing the final component so these final components are mainly to add spice to this render so this will include some potted flower plants maybe some fall-offs some decals and stuff so we are just going to be doing that stuff randomly so let's click on p first to exit this two-point perspective setting so after we are done exiting it let's start from the flowering pots so i'm just going to go to assets under this asset i'm going to go to online then on this online i'm now going to search for pots 
so this pot is just going to help me find some nice pot for the flowering plant i want to use so it's just showing some okay let me look for ones that are not problem just click on pot and such so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to click on this pot and i'm going to bring it in first so once i've brought in this pot i'm just going to click on this to and cancel to close this then i'm going to go over here and i'm going to just go to <coughs> models i'm going to go to nature then i'm not going to go to flowering shrub so if i don't see what i want in this flowering shrub i'm going to go to flowering herbs so i'm just going to be searching till i see what i want i can go to even flowering tree stuff so once i see the color i'm looking for let's say i see this one i like this tree here yeah? you are going to see that sometimes you don't necessarily need to pick the um, tree based on size you can pick a tree and just reduce it so it's just part of visualization so we can do whatever we want so after we are done loading this i'm just going to click on this tree now so once i click on this tree now we are just going to wait for it to load uh it's taking some time um then let me just increase the speed of this movement while it's loading okay so it has finally unhung so i'm just going to place this here so this is some blue flowering tree so i'm just going to click on this so i'm going to click on this tree and i'm going to reduce this size to 1500 so once i've reduced it to this compact size you can see how it just fits into this pot then i'm just going to adjust the position and i'm going to try and centralize it in this pot then i'm just going to drag this to this point here so now i've done this this is now a nice flowering pot i can click on this and click on this then i can just right click and group them together so after doing this now i can always rotate this here then once i rotate this i'll just click on it and place it here so now what i'm going to do now is i'm now going to try and adjust the position of this to about this point then i'm just going to drag this in here so this is already looking too big so i can reduce the overall size to 1.2 then i'm going to drag this here and i'm just going to drag this out here and do this so now we can do some other things. you can copy some other components to complement this i can just click on this lighting fixture hold shift copy this then drag this to this point here so i'm now going to drag this down here and i'm going to just drag this to this point so this light is going to kind of augment here so now we can now look for some smaller potted plants here that is just going to fit here so i'm going to go to assets again and i'm just going to go to click on pots click on search then i'm just going to type in pots so after i've searched in for the flower pot i can now bring in these ones here i can even bring in this um, rectangular flower pot here so i can just place this here and i can place some nice flowers and some fallout so now i'm just going to place this here then once i've placed this i think the size even keys in very well so i can just rotate this here i can just adjust this to this point here and i can click on close this to close so i can close this here okay so now i've done this now i'm going to go to asset once more again so now i'm going to just be looking for some flowers and some vines so i'm going to go to ornamental okay flowering shrub then i'm just going to place let's say one or two of these if i'm not seeing what i want i'm going to go to flowering herbs so i'm going to see till i get the kind of flowers i'm looking for so i'm going to pick this one here i'm going to place it here i'm going to reduce the speed of my camera movement or my navigation movement all right so we're just going to place zoom in and place this plant here then after placing this plant um we're now going to go and look for some more flowery plants so i'm just going to scroll down and i'm going to be looking for let's say let's try and place this one and i'm just going to place this vine here so now while we're waiting for them to download i'm just going to click on this one i'm going to adjust the position i'm going to adjust the size to 600 millimeter on this axis so it's not going to be too um cumbersome then why once this one is downloaded i'm just going to wait for it before i'm not going to place it. all right so i'm just going to click on this um, vine here or this grass like vine and i'm just going to try and place it here okay then we can just go over here let me just reduce this size then place this here then i'm going to click on escape now then i'm just going to click on this i'm going to reduce this size to about 300 so now i've reduced it i'm just going to try and place this around somewhat here okay then i'm going to look for more flowers here i'm going to be looking for um let's say let me just use um 
go to flowering shrubs then under these flowering shrubs now i'm now going to look for some nice okay i'm going to look for this one so i think this is pretty much enough so what i can do now is i can close this i can select this click control select this select this as well and select this then i'm just going to right click and i'm going to group them together so now i'm just going to hold shift and i'm just going to copy them in duplicates hold shift again copy them then hold shift again maybe place this one let's say here okay so now we've done this basically we can go back to this our view and we can see the difference it's making so now we are now going to start placing some entourage and some vehicles here just to enhance this so i'm going to click on p to exit this two points so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to place some moving vehicles here so i'm going to be placing some vehicles going back and forth so to do this i'm just going to click on this part line here once i click on this part line i'm going to click on vehicles so we're going to be using some free d5 vehicles for this one so now i'm just going to pick um i'm going to pick this i'm going to pick this range rover note i've downloaded them before so it's not a problem i'm going to pick this as well then what i'm going to do i'm going to pick a starting point somewhere here and i'm going to pick another point here so after i've done this now i'm just going to click on done so now this is done i'm just going to click on this and i'm going to change it to single lane then i'm going to reduce the density and i'm also going to reduce the velocity that is the speed of them to about 23 okay so this is going to be very helpful when we are doing animation so i can just adjust this here a bit then once i do this um i'm going to now go over to um, this one i'm just going to hold shift here and duplicate it once i hold shift i'm just going to go and change this to direction a i'm going to drop this down and i'm just going to click on character so once i click on character an area of character is going to come out here so i can just pick this terry exercise and um, remember what i said about this icon here once you are placing models so this is very very important because if you don't place models with this icon it's not going to be dynamic so let me just place this man here and i can maybe place him somewhere here doing this exercise then after i do that i can just place this casual man okay this casual man isn't animating so what i can do to this i can just go over to this filter here and i can just turn this dynamic only so this is only going to give us dynamic models so we can click on something like this let's say this lady here and we can just place her let's say here then we can just rotate her to walk this way so this is very essential because we are going to need it for the animation in future so with that said we can maybe place some more characters let's say we place this guy here and we can place him maybe walking in an opposite direction so this can be helpful okay then we can maybe place somebody waiting okay this betty waiting and we can maybe click on the model and just place the components maybe in this balcony or at this entrance so now once this is said and done i think we can place just one more we can place this edward standing in this balcony here or rather this terrace so once we have placed these guys here i'm going to close this then i'm going to go to this view here and i'm going to see what we've done so what is remaining here is one of the the sweet part of render which is um the placing of the car so for this i want to place a very realistic car and i don't want to use a d5 car so what i'm going to do in, i'm going to be using a car that i've worked on before a car i got from 3ds max so that is going to help us with this view so what i'm now going to do is i'm going to go to p now and i'm just going to place go to assets and i'm going to go to local so under this local i'm now going to go to my own vehicle library so i'm going to click on x to close that um search text i i set as pool then i'm just going to place this lexus this lexus here i'm going to click on it it's pretty heavy but it's going to be part of the resource file i'm going to leave to be accessed and then once i do this i'm just going to place the lexus car let's say somewhere here then i'm going to go back to this view because going back to this view is very important why doing all this stuff because it's going to just affect how the view is going to be so i, I want to place it in a position that is going to be visible enough and it's not going to be something obstructing anything so i'm just going to hit ctrl z okay ctrl y and see if it will rotate then i'm going to click on this building rotate it towards this direction and i'm just going to see how adjusting it is going to let me adjust it somewhere here i'm just trying as much as possible for it not to affect the beauty of the view so let me say i place this here and i just place this here to 
so i'm just going to drag this back here and place this okay so i think this is good enough the way it's positioned now so now this is done i can click on p now so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to zoom in slowly into this into the light pack of this um lexus car so i'm just going to click on this to actually slow down the movement okay so now i'm just going to click on this i'm going to reduce the movement speed so once i remove the, reduce the movement speed i'm just going to zoom in here then i'm just going to click on i on my keyboard to edit this so i'm just going to zoom in here zoom in into this then i'm just going to select this led light place i'm going to click on emissive i'm going to increase the intensity and change the color to red then i'm just going to exit this so i think this is what i wanted to do then i'm going to increase the camera movement speed and then i'm going to go back so now i want to place some extra stuff here so all this stuff i'm going to be placing here is just to add to the realism so it's going to include some decals some shrubs and just basically some of those kind of stuff so i'm going to go to asset here i'm going to go to online under this online i'm now going to simply go to decals so in this decals i'm just going to click on it and wait for the thing to load then i'm going to off this turn off this filter here to on dynamic so once i do this now i'm now going to place maybe some demarcations some road demarcations some leaf foliage i'm going to place this here i'm going to rotate it to this point and i'm just going to adjust it to this point here so i'm also going to click on this pedestal cross and i'm going to place it somewhere here i'm going to click on this and place it let's say somewhere here so after placing this somewhere here i'm going to look for some things like this footprint here i'm going to place this one here i'm going to change the color towards white i'm going to hold shift to just duplicate it and just copy it around so after doing some stuff i'm now going to go over to this model i'm going to click on search and i'm going to look for some rocks okay so this rocks is just basically to add to some imperfections in nature then i'm going to click on this one i'm going to reduce the size to as much as possible i'm going to place this one here i'm going to click on this one i'm going to increase the size a bit then i can place this one here then i'm now going to close this here and i'm going to be placing some things like um, i'm going to be placing some shrubs so i'm going to go to nature under nature i'm now going to go to some some of these other herbs so i'm going to place this one here i'm going to increase the size increase the size again if it's still not enough i'm going to place this here i'm going to go to this one too i'm going to click on this and i'm going to place this here so now this all this is placed i can click on escape go and i can go back to this view so now i think we have done a lot on the composition of this render so we just want to do one last thing so the last thing is going to be mainly to just add some greenery to this background point so it will not be looking to it will not be looking somewhat bowed like this so i'm just going to click on p and one thing i said i'm going to do is i'm going to change this click on this vehicle part click on this second one and i'm going to place it under the background building layer so what i'm now going to do now is i'm just going to quickly go over here and i'm going to go to assets i'm going to go to ornamental grass under this ornamental grass i'm just going to scroll down i'm going to go over to this brush too under this brush too i'm going to select this one i'm going to leave the remove this and leave the radius at this then i'm going to increase the density to around here the size i'm going to keep it minimal then i'm just going to brush it around here So once I do this, I think it's going to sort out the bounding issue on this. All right, so now this is done. I'm going to click on close. Then I'm going to go back to this view now, and I'm going to go back to this render scene. So I think it has solved most of our issues. So what I can now do now is to click on this distance tree here. Then I can just drag it down here and move it a bit forward and drag this here okay so now i think we are done with the environmental composition so we can just click on this vehicular part here okay let me go back to this view to make sure it's there then i'm going to click on this vehicular part and i'm going to hide two of them in this view in particular then i'm going to click on update scene so now what i'm going to do now is i'm now going to start doing the settings Sure. 
I'm going to go to broadleaf plant. So I'm just going to look for one of uh, my favorite broadleaf plants. That is this one. So I'm just going to download it and I'm going to place it somewhere around here. Okay, so while we're waiting for it to download, okay, just give it a few minutes, a few seconds. All right, so now this is done. I'm going to click on this um, broadleaf plant and I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to place it somewhere here. Then I'm going to click on V now and I'm just going to click on Escape, click on it, then increase the size. So now I'm going to close this now and I'm going to go back to this scenery and look at how it looks. So it's looking too big, so I'm just going to reduce the size to somewhere here, which I think is sufficient. So now I'm going to click on V again to exit this um, size distance, so I'm not going to be able to adjust the size by mistake again. So now now um, I'm going to look around and see whatever deficiency it has. Then with that out of the way, I'm not going to go into the effect. So if I go to this environmental settings, remember I touched the light in a bit, but I'm still going to adjust it. So currently this scenery is looking too warm. So I'm going to go, firstly, let's go to the cloud and increase this cloud amount to about 0.75. So this scenery is looking too warm. So I'm going to go to effect and reduce the temperature of the whole scene. Then I'm going to go to bloom amount and increase the bloom amount okay then now the bloom amount is at this point i'm not going to go to this vignette and i'm going to reduce and um, increase the vignette a bit then i'm going to go to this exposure and reduce it to 0. 0.0 minus 0. Um, 0 0.09 okay then click enter so now this the exposure is at this level i'm just going to click here and click on update so what i'm going to do is i'm now going to click on this camera speed and i'm going to reduce the camera speed and i'm going to try and pick this perspective again up to this point here then i think this is the point it was before then i'm just going to click on update so now i'm going to click on this i'm going to increase the speed so now i'm going to be copying some greenery so what these greenies are going to do is mainly going to cast shadow around here so i'm going to click on p to turn on this two point perspective then i'm going to click on this plant here i'm going to hold shift and copy it here then i'm also going to click on this one too click on this one that is porous here i'm going to hold shift and copy it somewhere here this one i can click on this and i can move this one here so i'm also going to click on this conifers here and i'm just going to copy more of them around click on this copy one of them here click on this two click on this two and copy this one around so i'm just going to adjust this somewhere here v and i'm going to reduce it so i clicked on this and i click on v again to, to increase the scale so i'm going to just drag this a bit click on v again so now we're at this um, point we're just going to go back to this and we're going to start tweaking the sound position so i'm going to go back to environment i'm going to go to this azimuth and go increase it to i think about 15 or so then once i've done this i'm going to increase this sun intensity here i'm going to go to this effect and i'm going to reduce the exposure back to minus 0 0.15 i'm going to go to effect and i'm going to be rotating this azimuth angle till i get a desired sun sun effect i'm just going to go and tweak the sun till i get a nice position of um, interplay of shadows and um, the building okay let me go from here and put it so somewhere here okay so i think this is looking nice so what we are going to do now is i'm just going to go back to this effect here once i go back to this effect i'm going to reduce this bloom amount i'm also going to go back here and increase the shadow intensity then i'm going to go to this environment here under this environment i'm going to reduce this sun discredure so the shadows are going to have some some um, much more needed density then i'm going to go back and reduce this altitude here this altitude is too high so i'm going to reduce it to about um, 40 okay so now this is at this position okay i don't think it's quite there yet so let me just adjust it a bit okay so now we're at this position here we can go back to this effect we can now go to this bloom amount and increase the bloom a bit so now the bloom is at this level we can now go and start turning off some of these lights okay so we're going to click on l first so the light will be visible then we're going to click on some of these lights in this interior spaces and we're just going to click on this eye icon to hide them so this is going to like reduce the intensity of the light here so it's not going to be too much because this is a, a, a daytime render so we're just going to reduce this light amount so it's not going to be overwhelming here then i'm going to go back to this effect increase this exposure a bit and i'm just going to click on update to update the render scene then i'm going to click on l to turn off this so now i'm going to go back i'm going to click on p now 
then I'm going to scroll off. So now we can see that there is a lot of shadow here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this plant and I'm going to drag it backward. So this is going to like reduce the intensity of shadow casting on this um, region of the building. Then I'm going to click on this view again and you're going to see that the shadows have reduced by just a bit. So what we can now do now is some of these lights, click on L again. Some of these street lights, you can just click on hide to hide them in view because it's going to be too much and i think this render setting is decent so now what we are going to do is we are now going to render this now so i'm just going to click on this icon here this camera icon here then i'm just going to go over here and i'm going to change this size to 3500 then once i've clicked on it i'm going to click on this um ch uncheck these channels that is ticked on if it's ticked on like this it's not it's not really necessary because it's going to give you a variety of um copies of the image that i can use for post-production but we don't actually need that now so i'm going to uncheck this then i'm just going to click on render and we're going to just locate where we want to well it's going to open your file explorer and we're just going to find um, the place we want to use and position the render so i'm just going to call this leave it as in two and i'm going to click on okay save and i'm going to save this render and it's going to render so we're going to see how the thing came out Okay, so now the render is ready. We are just going to click on open folder and it's going to show us where it's located in the file. So we are going to click on it and we are going to look at it. So because you have rendered for the first time, it doesn't mean that the work is over. So we are going to see what we can adjust. The first thing I notice is that we have a lackluster area here. So I'm going to put some a plant like this at this background here to fill up this region. I'm going to adjust this a bit because I don't like this gap here. Then I'm going to see whether I can do some little more things here. Maybe put some foot here just to augment it a bit so i think that is all then i'm going to reduce the exposure just a bit so i'm going to close this and i'm going to close this i'm going to click on close so now i'm going to click on this and i'm going to, going to adjust this to this point here i'm going to exit this uh, this one. so once i adjust this to this point here i'm going to click on hold hover around it hold shift and click on it then i'm going to click on v on my keyboard then this v is to adjust the scale so i'm just going to fill up this area and i'm going to click on v again then I'm going to go to assets. Under assets, I'm now going to go under decals now. So under this decals, I'm now going to be setting some things like um, I'm going to download this asphalt um, patch here. I'm also going to click on these footprints and just download some of them. And I can put these road markers too, these road dividers. Just this just to augment it a bit. So I'm going to click on P to exit these two point perspective settings. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to place this here. So now when it's placed here, I can go to this and I can adjust the uh, the color to white then i can just uh place another of these footprints here place another one here adjust it to white then after i've adjusted this i can just rotate it and i can just copy it around just to augment the realism so i can click on this i can hold shift copy this here copy this here i can click on this hold shift copy this here copy this here and copy this here then even maybe copy some of them so it's just going to augment this as well so i'm also going to click on this here and i'm going to place this in the middle of the road so i'm just going to rotate this here and place this somewhere here i can also click on this um, zebra cross hold shift copy it to this point here then click on this then move it somewhere here then just continue by clicking on shift to copy it and copy it up to this point so now this is done we can go back to this view here we can adjust some of this position of this um, paper around here um, maybe let's click on this guy here and let's place him okay i think placing him here is appropriate so after doing so uh, let me just click on him and place him around here so i think so far this is um, looking good and and let me just click on this i can click on this three here click on v reduce this one here i don't like this click on this one click on v then increase this to somewhere here then click on v again so i think this just gives it a good bar. click on it to just adjust it a bit so i think this just gives it a very nice background with everything we have done so far then i'm going to go to effect and i'm going to go to this exposure and reduce it to minus 0.12 then I'm just going to click on update scenery. So after I've clicked on update scenery, uh, I'm just going to, I think the tint is enough. Okay, let me click on this scene again. Then I'm just going to click on render. 
okay so one thing i've noticed is that some of these palms are not prominent so i'm going to try and see if i can adjust some of these palm sizes oh, okay so i'm going to click on v i think this one is enough then i can click on v to adjust this one too and i can click on v out of here so now i'm just going to update this scene i think then i'm going to go click on this and i'm going to uncheck this and i'm going to change this to 35 then i'm just going to click on render and i'm just going to click on this render tool and render this scene too and i'm going to click ok ok so one mistake we make i'm going to click cancel i'm going to make sure i uncheck this channel so i don't need it then i'm going to, going to click on render again then I'm just going to click on scene 2, click on save and replace it. So it's going to override it. Alright, so now this is done, we can click on open folder and we can see how it came out now. So I'm just going to click on this scene 2 and um, this is good. Okay. Uh, I think the uh, artificial light is too much a bit. Okay, I think I could off some things. Well, I think overall it's not a bad render. So now this is out of the way, we are now going to start working on the area of view. So I'm just going to click on this in 5 which is the area of view and I'm going to touch some things of course. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit to close in here. So I'm not going to waste uh, more of this. Uh, more of, I'm not going to, I just need to maximize this um, render view. So I'm just going to click on update scenery. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm now going to be adjusting some of these plants here, just a bit. I'm going to go over to this lighting layer and I'm going to turn off this lighting layer because I don't need this going to be a purely daytime render. So I'm going to turn off all the light. Then I'm going to update this scene. So now I'm just going to adjust some of these plants here. I'm going to click on this and adjust it here. Then I can click on this. I can hold shift, click on shift two and bring this one here. Then click on V, then I'll reduce the size to somewhere here okay then i'm going to click on v again then i can hold shift and just copy this to this point here and copy this to this point okay so now this is done we can just click on this hold control select the second one here okay click on this line here hold control click on this too hold shift then just copy this to this point here just for continuation okay so now um, this is done we can now start working on the environment so i'm going to turn off this um i'm going to click off this um, camera icon here then i'm just going to update this scene first for now then i'm going to go to environment effect then i'm going to turn off this auto exposure once i've turned this off um, i can now go back to environment and i can change it to custom zone. so for this um daytime render we are going to make the altitude a bit high i think up to 25 degrees then this um, sun intensity we are going to reduce it just a bit this sun this radius we are going to increase it to about 2.1 and this azimuth angle we are going to be rotating it till we get our desired effect so i'm just going to place this about here and see what it yields okay so now uh, okay let me just rotate this a bit okay so now i think we have set the sun position in a pretty decent position so now we are now going to be adjusting some other senses we are going to increase the cloud amount cloud thickness uh, we are going to go back to effect here under this effect we are going to reduce this bloom amount to zero after reducing the bloom amount we are going to increase this temperature a bit we are going to go to shadows and we are going to make the shadows a bit denser we are going to go to this highlight we are going to go to this exposure and reduce the exposure to about minus 0.8 i think this 0.8 is okay then we're going to go to this thing to increase it to about 0.054 this bloom we can tweak it small a bit this vignette we can increase it a bit then we're going to go back to this environment so we're going to increase this sun this radius to soften the shadows we're going to reduce this azimuth angle because i feel the sun exposure here is too much so i'm just going to rotate it because the what i'm targeting now is i don't want this pool to be too dark left in the dark at the same time i don't want the exposure of sun on the building to be too much so i'm just going to adjust this to a way that it won't be is going to balance out the two of them so you'll be able to see this swimming pool at the same time so i'm going to keep rotating it till i think i've gotten a good position of sunlight okay let's say to about this point here okay so i think leaving it somewhere around 95 
for just on 97 will do the trick so now we have set it to this point we can now adjust some of these things that are out of place like this pound here so once we have adjusted this we can just go over here and click on update scene so what we are going now going to do is we are just going to click on this render icon we are going to uncheck these channels then we are going to click on render and we are going to render this at um, 3500 that is 3.5k click on render uncheck this click on cancel uncheck these channels click on render again then this is um, image okay let me just click on this and call this center so once we've done this we are just going to click on save and we're going to render this all right so now this is done we can just click on open folder and we can see the area of view so we're just going to click on this and we're going to look out on this area of view so now we have some post-production to do which we're going to do on this rendered images but for now we're going to close this and we're going to delve into animation creation using d5 render okay so i'm just going to exit this so now animation creation in d5 is very simple and seamless and is easy to do no p so we're just going to go back to this our first scene and we're going to create an animation shot from here so the first thing to do is to go to this um, environmental effect under this environment we're going to turn on this wind setting and increase the wind strength so what this does is it's going to make the wind like you can see that these plants have started moving then we're going to go over here and click on this video interface okay so now animation involves simply picking a camera shot at a point and picking another camera shot at a point so those two camera shots transition between two of them is what is going to be the animation so let me explain what i mean practically so for instance we have this scene now so let me just click on this camera movement and slow the camera the speed of navigation down so let's say we start from here now and we click and click on this icon here to create a shot here so now now we have created the shot we are now going to zoom in again till we reach a point where we want to zoom into then i'm going to click on this icon here to create another shot then now you are going to see a unit a unit here so this unit um, represent the time between these two shots so i'm going to change it from three to five or you can change it to any time you want then i'm just going to click on play okay so another thing is after you have pick these two shot of your animation you are going to click on this animation and you're going to go over to this setting here you are going to click on this change it from auto smooth to linear click on this change it from auto smooth to linear too then we're going to click it to get a nice linear animation okay so as you can see now you can see that we have two human beings here so these human beings they are not they are just still in place but they can actually animate i remember when i was placing these models i also always told you to place a model that you see that dynamic icon attached to it so meaning is dynamic so i'm going to show you how to animate human beings so let's just look at this animation clip here from here to here okay it's saving let me just start again pick this shot and look at it animate so this is an animation clip now so let's start animating the humans for start you are going to have to drag your to the start of the video now to the start of the clip then i'm just going to click on this guy here and i'm going to click on this add keyframe so what is a keyframe a keyframe means a point in time so at this point in time this guy is at this position or i can drag him to any position i want let's say i want him to at this point in time be at this position so i'm now going to move to the end of the clip and i'm going to adjust this guy and move this guy to this point here this five seconds so i think a human being can walk this distance in five seconds then i'm going to click on this icon again and add another keyframe so this is another keyframe stating that at this point in time at the end of this clip is going to be at this position so i'm going to click on play and you are going to see the guy walking okay so in an animation clip you can also simultaneously animate multiple objects so let's say we want to animate this lady as well so i'm just going to click on this and i'm going to click on add um, keyframe then it means that at this point in time at this um, point of this clip she's going to be at this position at this point then i'm going to move to the end of this and i'm just going to drag her position to somewhere here and i'm going to click on add keyframe so i'm just going to click on play now i are going to see that the animation is going to just flow according to how i set it so if you for instance this woman is moving too fast so i can just go to this second keyframe and i can reduce her distance and if you reduce distance with the same time it means the speed of the person is going to reduce because speed is displacement over time okay so i'm just going to click on place and i'm just going to see the animation we've created 
so aside from this kind of animation we can click on this plus here we can also create a different kind of animation so let me just click on this clip one and click on this first shot again and go to this clip two so you see what i did now let me just delete this i clicked on plus here to create a new clip okay so we can rename the clip if you want do whatever you want with the clip but let's just leave it as clip 3 so i'm just going to zoom in a bit so i'm going to show you how to create another type of animation this is orbital animation so from for, for you to create what orbital animation means is you are going to move your camera is going to move in like a panoramic so it's going to move in a circular pattern so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on this icon here i'm going to change this from fly to orbit so once i change this from orbit i'm just going to click on add click on this to add a shot then i'm just going to okay, right click then i'm going to right click and hold once i right click and hold i'm now going to rotate this orbitally so once i rotate this orbitally i'm just going to click on this to add another shot here to add another shot then i'm going to change the same frame in between it to five okay so now i'm just going to click on this clip here just click on this blue icon to click on the clip then i'm going to change this from auto smooth to linear click on this change this to linear then i'm going to click on move um play so the animation is too slow meaning that i'm just going to click on this click on minus again click on this first shot then i'm going to then let me just click on this first shot then i'm going to right click hold and move this in an orbital manner and click on plus so now i'm just going to play it now So now i'm going to go i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to animate these two people i'm going to click on this guy click on this click on this then click on move and add another keyframe the same thing for this lady i'm going to go back to the start of this video click on add keyframe here move this to the end and just move the lady here then add another keyframe then i'm going to click on play okay so another thing you can do in animation you can also animate your environmental effect okay let's say we want to move the sunlight from here to here like as this animation is moving we want to also adjust the um, position of the sun so we are just going to go to this environmental tab and we're going to go over here to this azimuth angle so this azimuth angle dictates the position of the sun so at this um at this first clip you can see that the azimuth angle is at 24 and at this second clip this second shot you can see the azimuth angle is also at 23 so what you can do to displace the angle of the sun you can adjust this on this second clip to 36 then we're just going to go over here and we're going to click on update you can see i'm hovering over only this clip and i'm clicking on updating then once i click on it and i'm going to play it you can see that the shadows are animating as well okay so finally i'm going to now show you how to animate an area view so i'm going to click on this area view okay so for this area view i'm going to click on plus here to go to this fourth clip then i'm going to zoom out so we are going to see that the reason why i like animating after i've um, set the scenes well is after setting the scene i don't need to start working on too much on the environmental effect you can see that this scene is already set on how we rendered it so i'm just going to click on this um make sure this is at orbit then i'm just going to click on this add clip here then i'm going to orbit it here and add another click on this to add another clip then i'm going to set the timeline to be five seconds so now i'm going to apply basically everything we learned remember i already placed these cars moving at opposite direction so if you play them you are going to see the cars will be moving all right so i'm just going to click on this then i'm going to change this from auto smooth to linear very important then i'm just going to click on play so it's going to be a smooth animation so i'm just going to apply everything i've said previously on animation to this particular scene and we're going to render all of them so i'm just going to click on this here click on this scale here then i'm just going to click on add new keyframe move this to the end push out to work this distance if you notice one thing that you notice in this animation clips i'm setting all of them at five five seconds because the kind of animation i love creating are just five five seconds and slow themed animations not the one that the camera will be moving like a ghost it's just my personal preference some people like the latter but me i personally like when the animation is just seamless and just simple so i'm just going to move this guy here working opposite this woman and add a keyframe okay so now i'm also going to animate the environmental setting so i'm going to click on this go to environment this is 97 click on this second clip go to environment again and i'm now going to adjust this from 97 to okay i'm going to throw more light here so to 106 then i'm going to update this so i'm going to click on play 
okay so this is not giving me enough enough environmental difference as i'm looking for so i'm going to increase this to let's say 126 and i'm going to click on update then i'm going to play it so now you can see we have created these three animations now so one thing to do is once we click on this clip one we are going to go over to this resolution so this resolution is important as it dictate animation quality of the animation so we're going to change it from 720p to 2k if you want to do 4k you can do 4k but i would recommend 2k 2k is like the most balanced aspect of both um, quality and something that will not kill your system so i'm just going to click on this and i'm just going to see what so far so i'm going to play this animation i'm going to click on this one i'm going to also play this one okay in one of these animation i'm going to try one thing i'm going to click on one of this animation clip and i'm going to click on this for example and i'm going to go over to this lighting layer and i'm going to turn this lighting layer off once i turn the lighting layer off i can click on all this to update this then i can click on this too and i can also turn the lighting layer off so once this lighting layer is off i'm also going to update this i'm not going to click on play so you can see this like it without light then you can click on this this one is with light so this one with light now i can now click on this i can go to environmental effect i can now change this azimuth angle to let's say 10. then i'm just going to update this here i'm going to click on this too and change the azimuth angle to, to 10 then i'm just going to update this as well so you can see i've just created two different kind of scenery so this one is more of a daylight scenery i'm going to click on play this one is more of an evening scenery then this one is now another daylight scenery okay so what we are now going to do is we are going to add this to queue so i'm going to click on this clip one i'm going to click add to render queue click on this clip three i'm going to click add to render queue click on this clip 4 i'm going to click add to render queue then to render all of this i'm just going to click on this render queue i'm going to click on all then i'm going to check this um auto close d5 after rendering finishes so this just helps you once it has rendered all these clips it's going to close d5 and i'm now going to click on this to open the file location so i'm just going to create a new folder called animation so after this i've created this new folder i'm just going to click on it i'm going to click on select folder i'm going to change the prefix to let's call this to du and i'm going to click render so it's going to save the d5 project and it's going to render everything simultaneously all right so now the animation is ready let's just quickly look at some of them so we can see this one here we can even select all of them together and just right click and open then we can just watch all of them play so this is the first clip this is the second clip and this is the third clip so you can see this is amazing all right so now we have seen the animations and we have seen the renders we are just going to do some post-production on the renders then i think we'll call it a day so i'm just going to open photoshop um i'll personally recommend photoshop from 20, 2020 and upwards if you want to just edit this thing so we are not going to be doing any special editing we are just going to be doing some basics and touch some things maybe we are lacking in the rendered views so we are just going to open photoshop then we are going to open our folder where the render is then we are just going to kind of minimize it or reduce the size then we're just going to drag in this first one and we're going to edit it the first thing we're going to do is to click on c c is to crop so i'm just going to click on say okay now it has activated then i'm going to crop up some parts that i don't think are really necessary so i'm going to crop to this point here i'm also going to just crop this a bit to this point then i'm going to click on finish so now i'm just going to go under this um, filter here i'm going to go to camera raw filter so this camera raw filter is basically going to adjust some um, you can adjust some tweak some things of this rendered view so firstly there is there are nothing there is not really too much to edit here so the first thing we are going to do is we are just going to reduce the temperature a bit i think it's too warm um the tint we can increase the tint a bit the exposure we can drop the exposure a bit the contrast i think we can increase the contrast just a bit the texture we are just going to increase it a bit so you can see the touches i'm making here are just minute touches so the shadows i think the shadows are okay the clarity i think the clarity can increase a bit then we are just going to go to this vibrance and saturation the vibrance just i'm just going to be adding plus two plus two 
then i'm going to go to this detail here then this detail i'm going to increase the sharpness to about 30 the noise reduction to about 10 and the color noise reduction then i'm going to go back up go back to this basic here and let me just i'm going to tweak this temperature change to about okay let me just leave it at minus two then i, I can click on this to show the original one and show the current one then i'm just going to click okay then i'm just going to click ctrl s to save this so once i've saved this i can click on this and just open the second one i can click on this second view that is in three and i can just drag it to this point here so once i've dragged this in three to this point i can click on filter so instead of um clicking on and starting the whole camera um raw filter again i can just go over here and just click on this camera raw filter so it's going to apply the those settings i applied in that previous one to this one then i'm going to hit ctrl s i'm just going to click on this i'm going to click on this move icon to exit the crop view so i think this is good to go so we can just close this and now we can open our two rendered scenes and just look at it okay so this is in one the first render and this into the area of view so this is actually what d5 can do we can go back to the animation and we can see some things in the animation again looking very nice and beautiful so i'm just going to select the animation one more time just for flex and i'm just going to open it and we're going to go through this things okay so this is what you can basically do with d5 render this is just a duplex render nothing too special in particular but this is just to highlight the um, pro proficiency of d5 render okay so if you have reached the point of this video congratulations on this tour on d5 render um i hope you learned enough to be able to render things on your own independently um you can also check the link in the description below if you want to get the resource files of this project you can also support the channel using that method i think it will cost about ten dollars or so so also hit the notification bell like this video share with your friends don't forget to try out d5 render and also try my affiliate link you can use it to get a discount on your purchase of d5 render pro so you can get the full power of d5 so without out of the way i'm going to wish you good luck till we meet again in the next video thank you